The two-month hiatus between short track World Cup events is officially over, and now it's a mad dash to the Crystal Globe Trophy. Through four events, a mere two points separate leader Stephen Dubois and the...
Well, the two-month hiatus between short track World Cup events is officially over. And now it's a mad dash to the Crystal Globe Trophy through four events. A mere two points separate leader Stephen Dubois and defending champion Park ji But William Dangeno and Kim Gunwoo can still pull for that away. On the women's front, it's 19-year-old sensation Kim Gilley. She's up 60 points, but Kristen Santos Griswold is having the year of her career for the United States. Two World Cups remain ahead of the World Championships, so it is a five-week sprint to lift the Crystal Globe. And we welcome you to ISU's coverage of World Cup short track speed skating. Today it's the fifth stop on the circuit, bringing us to Joy Next Arena in beautiful Dresden, Germany. Patrick Keen is with you. Welcome to our coverage. We apologize for some technical difficulties just a, a moment ago. We are just now kicking off into the men's 1,000-meter prelims, 12 prelims. One is already in the books with Pietro Siegel and the deal Gallic Metov of Kazakhstan moving through on to the heats. And this is heat number two of 12. And in the second heat, we'll see... Tian Boer of the Netherlands. He's in helmet 34. Jordan Pierre Gillet, right now the world classification top ranked skater at the 500 meter level. Stefano Alexander Kermijev from Bulgaria. And Lucas Wareham out of Australia. 58 skaters across the prelims for this first running of the thousand. We'll have the second prelims coming up a little bit later on on this day one session here in Dresden. And what an interesting weekend this promises to be. First and foremost, who's not here? Well, the Lou brothers of China are not in Dresden this weekend. But who is here? Who adds extra layers, particularly on the women's side? As we count things down to the final couple of World Cups, Kim Bhutan of Canada is here. And Suzanne Schulte, the reigning Crystal Globe winner on the women's side. Each of those two skaters, elite as they are, have uh, stepped away and missed the first four World Cups and the European and the four continents over the course of this World Cup season. But we will see them both in action coming up fairly shortly here this morning. So great to have them back as we hear the bell for the final lap of this second heat for the men's 1,000-meter prelims. And it's Pierre Gillet of Canada to Boer. It will finish 1-2 unofficially and moving on to the heats. So as we settle in, we welcome you to Dresden, the Joy Next Arena, open back in 2007. And the city of Dresden, a little more than a half a million population, will enjoy this weekend of racing. And then we'll wrap up the World Cup season next week back in Gdansk, which is where the European Championships were held just a couple of weeks ago. And then about a month on to the World Championships in uh, Rotterdam coming up in the middle of March. So had a nice little gap, especially for all the competitors from North America and those who competed in the four continents. The European Championships is a few weeks ago as you look at the official results from the second prelim heats. But now it literally is going to be a, a, a sprint to the finish over the next five weeks. We'll have everything determined. And, as we move forward over the course of this weekend, we will uh, get a closer look at just how tight some of these races are. Stephen Dubois, a two-point lead on Park G1. William Dangeno right now finished, is in third position as we get our first look at Park G1 over the course of this weekend. Marcus Howard from the United States in this field, and Farrell Tracy, the oldest of the Tracy brothers. He's in his first World Cup event a couple of seasons as we... Take a look right now at the defending Crystal Globe champion. That's Park Ji Won, the 27 year old, who is having a very solid year. Competition, though, has been very fierce around him over the course of this World Cup season. But he's in excellent position to defend. Right. So, for the top five right now in the Crystal Globe standings on the men's side, Dubois, Park, Danjno, Kim, and Lu Xiaowang. We'll see Dubois racing his two events this weekend in both runnings of the 1,000. Same for Park Jiwon. So they will go potentially heads up in each of the two A finals should they get there. Danjno will be in one of the 1,000s. He'll be in the second running of the 1,000 later on today. 
in the prelims, and also the 1500, and that is the same selection for Kim Gun Woo. He'll be in the 1500, and in the second run into the 1000, and again, Lu Xiaowang of China, who right now sits fifth, is uh, not here this weekend. So Park Ji Wan right now in the lead. Marcus Howard of the United States right now second. First and second, and then a maximum of 11 will move on to the heats. And you will see those heats coming up uh, momentarily. We'll get to the women's heats after this set of prelim heats are done for the men, and then right back for the men's heats to follow. So the schedule of events for us, at least in this morning session in Dresden. After the thousands, we'll get to the quarterfinals of the 1500s. And then we'll wrap things up with the quarterfinals of the Bix Relay. There's the bell, and Park Ji Wan will win this heat and a photo finish for that key second spot between Marcus Howard of the United States and Hiroki Yokoyama of Japan, who will turn 30 years old next week. Been on the World Cup circuit off and on since 2015 season. We'll see who got up for second place here, but Park Ji Wan clearly through, moving on to the heats. Park Ji Wan been on the podium every World Cup so far over the course of this year. Gold in the opening World Cup in Montreal in the thousand. Took another gold in the fourth World Cup of the season, the one in Seoul, which was about what a couple of months ago now. But he's been a, a solid contender in just about every race that he has uh, been entered in. And get a look at the photo finish there. Marcus Howard slides to third. But again, most of the third place finishers will move on to the heats. So he won't be fretting a whole lot right there. So Yokoyama finishing second on that photo. Park Jiwon is on to the heats. So three of the 12 prelims are done. We'll get a look at the lineup card for heat number four. Shogo Miyata, 20 year old from Japan. Saksibaya from Kazakhstan. Ivan Donchev, the 18 year old from Bulgaria. Jonas Hammermuller from right here in Dresden, who's been buried by injuries over the last couple of years. A knee injury last year, broke his foot a couple of years ago, and the 19-year-old is on home ice. And Alejandro Rivero, Marshak of Belgium, on the right side of your screen, toward the back and helmet 170. Those are the five in this fourth heat. And Miata, one of the top juniors several years ago. He's in helmet 21 for Japan. Represented Japan in the Beijing Olympics. Donchev, the youngest in the field in helmet 84. No top tens yet over his emerging World Cup career. And there's a look at Miyata right now in front. Zaksibayev of Kazakhstan. Sitting second, and then it's Hammer Muller. Should have some pretty good crowds over the course of the weekend. Still filing in on this uh, first couple of moments here of day one in Dresden. And we'll see some big names, some big names returning to the ice for the first time this World Cup season. Then we'll see some teams that have brought some, uh, some new skaters, some fresh faces, some young faces. Uh, particularly the, the Chinese squad here in Dresden this weekend. And there you hear the bell, Miata still out front. And one skater goes down to the back, the back actually two, Donchev and Hammermuller both going down. And to the line is Miata, Zaksibayev second. And Rivero Marshak of uh, Belgium finishing third. We will have a referee's liaison once again this weekend in Dresden. So if there are any incidents, and we know there will be dozens, but when they occur, you'll see the yellow box appear in the lower left of your screen, part of the score bug, and we have an official's liaison on site in Dresden who will be informing us mostly in real time about what the officials in the on the ice and up in the video replay booth will be taking a look at as far as uh, pot uh, potential infractions. So Miata in the clear there for his heats. 
And there's a look at Miata right there. Balaj Kolber from Hungary. He is the lead referee over the course of the weekend. Peter Wirth of Great Britain. Thilo Michel of Germany are the assistant referees on the ice. Alexander Volex of Slovakia and Monika Rajkowska of Poland are the assistant referees in the video booth over the course of this weekend. So they will all get a big workout. We may be getting a little bit of workout here. There's Miata about to depart the ice and awaiting still the official results from prelim heat number four. And there are the results. Donchev does draw the penalty. That involved Hammermuller, but they were at the back of the pack, so Hammermuller was not in position to advance, so he will not move through. He'll need to move through the, the repechage potentially. So here's a look at what they saw. Donchev and Helmet 84. On the right side of your screen there as they battled for third and fourth. That spilled the Hammer Mueller down, finishing fourth officially in this heat. That will now take us to heat number five here in the prelims for the men. Enzo Proust, Lee Jong Min, one of the top world juniors a couple of years ago. He's in helmet 127. Theo Collins of Great Britain, Mohamed Bozdag of Turkey, and Tinius Rambo Alme of Norway. Those are the five on the ice in the heat number five. Lee and Helma 127 inside position up near the front. First individual podium came earlier this year. It took bronze of the second World Cup in Montreal. Giving him confidence. A very stacked Korean team once again this year. He's just 22 and kind of trying to break through. Bozdag of Turkey right now in the second position. And then Theo Collins. Represented Great Britain in speed skating at the Winter Youth Olympic Games back in 2020. He's in third position right now for Team GBR. Rumble Alme in the red kit slides back into fifth position as Proust is now up to four trying to make a move in the red helmets. Again, first and second auto advancers to the heats. Most third place finishers will also move through. There's the bell, final lap. Collins still third and trying to make a move around Bozdag in that final corner, clustered. And the stretch, it looked like Bozdag did get up for second. Perhaps Collins pipped him at the finish line. We'll see. Your lead young man should be on his way to the heats. Tight finish, really second through fourth. So we'll take a look at the finish here and see if indeed Collins got there. We'll check the official times and see who landed second. It will be Bozdag, uh, barely ahead of Theo Collins. Bruce fourth, Rambal Ahmed finishing fifth. So again, started with 58 skaters across these 12 prelims. Five of the 12 are now in the books. Now we'll see a couple of Olympians from Beijing coming up in heat number six. Quentin Faircock, who has had a just a really solid year at the 500 meter distance this year. He's been on the podium a couple of times. Opening week in Montreal and then again in Beijing in early December. Feels like he's been around for years and years, but still only 24. Kaczynski of Poland, an Olympian as well. 
There's a look at the fans of Lucas in the stands. Helmet 35 for the 24-year-old. And again, the World Cup will finish up the World Cup season next week back in Gdansk. And there was quite a bit to celebrate with the uh, European Championships for Team Poland a couple of weeks back. Some really good individual performances. Both the men's and women's relay squads got it done in the A finals. And the fans came out at the Euros a couple of weeks back. Be back on that same ice in Gdansk next weekend. And we'll have all that coverage for you. The rest of the field, Ivan Martinic of Croatia in helmet 104. 19-year-old Yaroslav Morosov from Ukraine. And Lena Sagas Riznes of Norway in helmet 187. Those are the five in this sixth heat of 12. So there is Kuzinski of Poland out to the lead. Ferkok right now third. In these thousand meter races, nine laps. First and second automatically move into the 1,000 meter heats, which will come up within the next hour here on day one. It's qualifying day here in Dresden. Pace picks up inside the final two laps, and there goes Ferko. Kuzinski a bit too far away to really draft, but there's a nice gap between Kuzinski and the back three. So Ferko and Kuzinski in the clear. Those two will move through to the heats. Faircock right now ranks number five in the 500 meter classification, but he has been a just a solid contender at the 500 meters basically every World Cup we've seen over the course of this year. And that's really what it's all about now, consistency at this level. The talent pool is so deep, but if you can consistently you know, get to semifinals and get into those A finals. Good things will happen. We're beginning to see some really solid things happen for Quentin Faircock of France. So Faircock and Lucas Kaczynski. 1-2, and they're on to the heats a bit later on on day one. And the official results from heat six, there they are. Risen his time at 133 low. Likely to move him through. Again, we haven't seen any advancements due to penalty so far anyway, halfway through. So if that holds true, that means 11 of the 12 third place finishers would advance as well to the heats. But again, we have six more heats to go here in the prelim. So there's the start list for heat number seven. So Yira has been on a World Cup podium once so far this year. And a silver and a 500 that came in Seoul a couple of months ago. There's Michael Nowinski. He is a big, burly bulldog on the ice, 20 years old, but he towers over most of these skaters and he is a very aggressive skater. Tariq Omarajic from Bosnia and Herzegovina and Maxim Maximov of Bulgaria, who turns 18 years old next week. He's in helmet 89, those are the four. Omarajic right now sets the pace. But so Yira, Olympic bronze medalist in Pyeongchang in 18 and the 1,000 world junior champ uh, many, many years ago. So Yira now 31 years old, but heck, 13 years ago, he was a world junior overall champion. And he was the world overall champ at the senior circuit back in 2017. And right now, so is trying to Got to pick his moment at the back of the pack. Again, top two will move through to the heats. Nowinski in front. There he goes so up into third. A little bump there. Gets 
Kind of pushed out a little wider, but he maintains his composure. Coming up on the final two laps. Still Nowinski. And there's the bell, and there's the move on the inside by Soye Rob. Easily gets past Omarajic. And it's Nowinski and So coming through. That's just veteran poise by Soye Rob. Here we get plenty of time. We're just waiting for the right moment. And the right kind of angle to make that inside pass around Omarajic. So as expected, Nowinski and Soye Rob. One, two, finish. And on to the heat for those two. Five more heats remain in the thousand. get our first look this weekend at right now the leader in the crystal globe standing Stephen Dubois two points up on Park G1 He's been on five World Cup podiums over the course of this season and Dubois interesting field Kai Hausman of the Netherlands Tristan Navarro Made his debut at the World Cup circuit back in 2014, but all eyes right now are on Dubois. Who so far of the World Cup season, and I don't want to diminish this, has only won one individual gold, but it's all about consistency, getting to those A finals, getting on podiums. Uh, very few skaters have been more consistently doing that than Dubois. That's why the points have been racked up and that's why right now he is in the lead of the crystal globe by two points over Park G1 and by 79 points over his teammate William D'Angelo who right now is in third and you recall Kim Gun Woo earned a penalty in one of the last World Cup races in an eighth and a, on his way toward an eighth final and as a result was unable to pick up points and as a result he went from first down to fourth He's a fairly distant fourth, about 143 points behind Dubois at this stage. You see Kim Gun Woo in the second racing of the 1,000 and the 1,500 this weekend. Lee Kuhn of China is 19 years of age. World junior bronze medalist in the 500 last year. Right now holding his own in second position. We hear the bell, and it is Dubois breaking away a little bit. The battle now is going to be for that second spot. And Hausman does not look as though he's going to get around Lee Kuhn. And Lee Kuhn, one of those uh, new faces for Team China here in Dresden this week, and one of many. Again, the Lou brothers are not here, but there's been a, a fairly uh, robust interchange of athletes on Team China this weekend. So we get our first look at Lee Kuhn, 19 years old and helmet 55. But Dubois racing his own race. Not letting the youngster kind of set the set the tempo, set the pace. Dubois made the pass and just kind of eased away and said, you guys deal with that fight for seconds. And the AQ winning the race for Dubois, so he's on to the heats. And the official results from heat number eight. And it will be Lee Kuhn. On his way is the one of the youngest skaters we'll see over the course of this weekend. 
He's in to the heats. We'll see how he fares later on. Good test for him in the senior circuit. So four more heats to go here in the prelims. And we'll see it. our second American, Caleb Park. His younger brother, Wesley, we'll see him in the very next heat coming up. Lucas Speckenhauser right now. Overall number 10 in the Crystal Globe standings. But at this distance, he's world number four. Here to see the Crystal Globe ranking of number 10. He's only about 10 points away from being in eighth place, and Jens Van Schwoot of the Netherlands is not here this weekend either. It's an opportunity for Speckenhauser to climb the standings a bit. There you see Caleb Park in helmet 72 for the U.S. Adrian Degwitzer of Belgium. Brandon Pock from Singapore and Jin Yu Li from China. Also new to the Chinese Senior World Cup team this weekend. I haven't seen him race over the course of many World Cups yet and makes his presence felt right away. Sprinting to the lead. Pock of Singapore, just 17 years old. He's back in the red and the silver cap at the back of the pack in the right of your screen. Speckenhauser, he's been an interesting cat to watch over the course. He loses his balance, stands straight up, and stays on his skates. Fortunately for him, we've seen him actually do that a couple of times. We don't see any yellow box appear, so evidently that was just Speckenhauser falling back on his heels a little bit. But stays on his skates, but he's now going to have to get to first or second position from the back of the pack. He'll need to climb some spots here with four laps to go. Kayla Park of the U.S. right now is second. Degwitzer third. Speckenhauser now up to fourth. And the young teenager, Park right now at the back of the pack. And now is going to have to move. He's in the blue suit. Swinging wide. There's the bell. He needs to pass a couple and is trying to do so right here out of this corner. And he will get around Park of the U.S. And he may even get to the front and he will how about that took him a lap and a quarter to go from fourth to first and unofficially take that heat and Jin Yu Li of China did hang on to second position Caleb Park finishing third which again when you're advancing 11 of 12 potential third place finishers assuming no advancements due to penalty Caleb Park in good good position to move through as well Let's see what happened here with Specking out, so yeah, there's no push whatsoever by Degwitzer behind him. Put that left hand down, rose up, and at that speed coming out of that corner, he was fortunate, fortunate to stay on his feet. So plenty of early adversity on day one here in Dresden for Speckenhauser. He's hoping it's smooth sailing here on out. Nice recovery. Speckenhauser and Lee. We'll move on to the thousand meter heats a little bit later on here in day one so three more heats to go we saw Caleb Park for the US finish third in that heat now we will see his brother Wesley Park three years younger than Caleb Wesley is 20 they both hail from Irvine California and both on this European trip for Stephen Goff in the US Cellier, who initially began representing France and then came over to represent Poland a couple of years ago inside position here. Our first look at Rostislav Leontenko of Ukraine, Mark Zizmadia from Hungary, and Lukasz Kovac in his first World Cup event for Germany. A lot of young kids and very energetic fans in attendance here on day one. You can hear them in the background. Cheering on Kovac for sure. Leontenko of Ukraine in the blue and yellow. He will take this one out quickly. Wesley Park of the United States. Second little gap to Selye. 
Metzelier, an aggressive, very fast skater. He won't be intimidated by that little gap whatsoever. Park looking for room to try and pass. Leontenko couldn't get around him. Now Selye is right on his hip. And there goes Park. Swings hard in. Will make the pass. Nice move by Wesley Park of the U.S. And Selye goes right with him and passes him on his left. So it's Selye and Park 1-2. This is Mati a third. And a gap back to Leontenko, who set the early pace. And further back to Kovac. There's the bell. Top two will move through to the heats. Right now, a battle for that second position. Wesley Park try to hang on, and Sismati will not get to him. So Selye unofficially wins the heat. Wesley Park finishing second. And the fans from across the border in Poland, sharing Selye through to the heats. When you get into these early rounds, you talk about 12 prelim heats, almost 60 skaters, the the talent level. I mean, there can be a, a fairly steep drop off in these opening rounds. Again, on day one, test the ice, get comfortable with it. Don't make any big mistakes, especially if you are kind of at the, at the top of the list in terms of talent in your heat. You don't want to have to make any mistakes and be forced to race a couple more times through the repechage to get to the ultimate goal, which is to the next round. As we get a look at the next five here in heat number 11, Felix Roussel of Canada. Earned bronze in Dresden last year in the 1,000. There's a look at Roussel, helmet 24. He's going to have a couple of World Cup podiums this year. Silver in the 500 in Montreal, and bronze in the 1500. That was in Seoul back in mid-December. So he has had a nice one. We see a lot of, I don't want to say new faces from Team Canada, but some newer, larger names from Canada coming on the scene this year. Dangeno probably right at the top of that list, at least on the, on the men's side. And a Bly of Canada has been on the podium a couple of times. But again, we'll see Kim Butan coming up shortly. And Suzanne Schulting, both on the ice. Now Butan will be in the first running of the 1,000. Schulting will see her first today in the 1,500. She'll be in the second running of the 1,000. Once we get to the women's heats here in the first run of the 1,000, we'll kind of let you know where the top five skaters are and Bhutan and Schulting as far as uh, where you can catch them on their two individual events over the course of the weekend. Roussel right now in the lead. Radek Bochkas of the Czech Republic right now in second. Lucas McDonald, who was born in the United States and now represents New Zealand. Competed initially for Canada. McDonald right now distant third as Roussel and Bochkas have pulled away to a sturdy lead. And there's the bell for those two, Roussel and Foskis. Again, almost all third place finishers will move through, but one won't. It will depend on time. And third place finish here in this heat, not terribly quick. We'll see how it compares with the rest. No trouble at all for Felix Roussel from Canada and Radek Fotskis of the Czech Republic. So we'll see how that time fares for the skater who finished third. It was a photo for third. And again, so far with only one 
prelim and heat remain. We've seen no penalty advancements. And if that stays the case with one more heat to run, then all third place finishers with the exception of one, with the exception of the slowest, will also be advanced through straight to the heats. So we'll check the time on this one and see how it compares. Still waiting for the official results. A quick scan that I'm just doing. Right now the slowest third place time so far is 133.248 by Risness of Norway back in heat six. And Eroglu of Turkey, plenty good. So right now Risness would be on the bubble. And the only way that he would get through is if the third place finisher in this last heat goes slower than 133 or if there's a penalty advancement, we wouldn't see a third place finisher from uh, the next slowest move through either. So a lot on the line here. And into the final prelim heats, we'll see Roberts Kruzbergs of Latvia, fourth at the Euros just a couple of weeks ago in the 1500, five World Cup medals last year, all at the 1,000, including a silver right here in Dresden. So the Olympian from Latvia, inside position, helmet number eight, and away we go. Daniel Tibors of Hungary, Thomas Natalini from Italy, Glebimchenko from Kazakhstan, and our first look this World Cup season of Hugo Basma in helmet 183 from the Netherlands. So those are the five, and Basma out quickly, along with Natalini. So the finish with Kruzbergs and Natalini. And that'll bring us to the end of the prelims for the first running of the thousand. And we'll take a video review and a potential infraction here. So hold on until this one becomes official. Represented by that yellow video review box in the lower left of your screen. There are the official results, so that has been cleared away. It will be Kruisbergs and Adelini. The small Q next to Tibor is 127.076, means he is automatically moved through as well to the heats. So that will wrap things up for the first running of the men's 1,000 prelims. And they will open up the ice and resurface. And when we come back, we'll go straight to the women's heats of the 1,000 and that will be followed by the heats of the men's thousand that we just saw a moment ago. So stay tuned as they resurface the ice, bring the Zamboni out. We'll take a look at our qualifiers onto the heats. 
So we are underway in uh, World Cup Dresden. Glad you're with us. Here are the final results again from the last heat. Cruzbergs and Natalini are through. And Tibor's by third place time also moving through. And officially the only third place finisher not to move through was indeed Lina Sagas de Riznes of Norway. So all the other third place finishers through, that's Hausman, that's Caleb Park, Sismadia, Eroglu from Turkey, and all of the others. Marcus Howard of the United States has also moved through as well with his third place finish back in prelim heat number three. So we'll take a break and we'll come back. And when we return, we'll have the women's 1,000-meter heats. And we will see some big names, including Kim Bhutan and her World Cup debut this season. She will be in the second heat when we come back after about a 15-minute break as they resurface the ice. So stick around. From Dresden, Germany, this is ISU's coverage of World Cup Dresden. Back in a few.
Back inside the joint, Exterina in Dresden. And ready now for the first of eight heats of the opening and running of the women's thousand meter. And some names we haven't heard a whole lot over the course of this year. One will be coming up in the very next heat, but first off, Xandra Velzebor, who right now is number three in the Crystal Globe standings on the women's side. A fairly distant third, though, behind Kim Gilley and Kristen Santos Griswold, but she's had an ultra consistent and dominant season at the 500 meter. There's the gun, and away we go in the women's first heats in the 1,000. But Velsbor at the 500-meter level, gold in Montreal the opening week, gold in World Cup 3 in Beijing, gold in World Cup 4 in Seoul, and then took gold of the Euros a couple of weeks ago and held my number 8. I mean, she has just been an absolute force, and well, now she's sitting third. Wang Yi of China in helmet 35, just 18 years old. She's had a, a terrific kind of breakout season at such a young age. A couple of World Cup podiums in the 500 as well. Nicola Mazur of Poland right now setting the pace. Betty Mosk of Germany. And Guro Samdal Melhus of Norway. Those are the five in this opening heat. 36 skaters are vying for a spot in the quarterfinals. First and second will move on, along with a maximum of two third-place finishes. Otherwise, through the repechage tomorrow. And there's Wang Yi. Three World Cup events last year, no podiums, and she's already been on a podium a couple of times to 500. Bronze both times in Seoul and in Beijing as Velsbor takes control. Wang Yi right now in second position. Missouri is just in third. And it will be Vilsabor and Wang 1 2. So there's a look at Velzebor safely through the quarterfinals. She's been on one World Cup podium at this 1,000 meter over the course of this year. And now in position to maybe do it again. So bronze in the 1,000 in Seoul in the middle of December. Well, it's been a long time coming to see that name, Helmet 7, representing Canada, Kim Bhutan, the 29-year-old, is back on the ice. And great to have her back. Again, she was on the podium for all three events in Pyeongchang. Bronze medalist in the 500 in Beijing. Four-time Olympic medalist in the world number two a couple of years ago. But after the world championships last year, she posted a message on Instagram saying that she is Going to be missing the first few events of the season, continuing her school journey and her life journey in the community with a resource for young mothers and children living in a situation of vulnerability. So that's where she has been with her school and with that mission. And she's ready. She's happy and thrilled to be back on the ice. And who knows what form she's in. But we'll find out over the course of this weekend. We'll see Bhutan. In this 1,000, we'll see her also in the 500. And Bhutan right now in second position. And this is a tricky little race. Selma Pouchman in helmet 17. She's had a phenomenal breakout season for the Dutch. She may have won four golds in the 500 over the four World Cups were it not for her teammate, Sandra Velzebor. She's finished behind or tied for gold in one instance. 
in basically every 500 meter event that she's raced. Mario Levesque of France and Svetlana Rapetska, the other two in this race. So there's Boutin. Familiar position for her. 29 years old, she's now second. Trying to shake the rust off and get back to competing against the absolute best in your sports. And Pouts with the 500 level is really one one and one A with Velzebor. And it's Poutsma and Bhutan right now one two. There's the bell for the first time this year for Kim Bhutan. First two will advance the quarterfinals and it does not look as though we'll see Bhutan do anything silly here. So she will finish second. Welcome back to the ice Kim Bhutan. Finishing a tight second to Selma Poutsma. And we will see Bhutan advance straight to the quarterfinals. The sport loves her and needs her back. But again, you have to admire what Bhutan is doing and her sense of self and sense of purpose. So the sport will certainly wait on her whenever she is ready to resume. And that time is this weekend here in Dresden. We would expect her to, to see her in, in Poland next week. And same can be said for Suzanne Schulting. Schulting was kind of targeting the European swing of the World Cup circuit and really gearing up, ramping up for the World Championships in the middle of March. So for these athletes to get back on the ice, it's it's more about you know timing, trusting yourself, and uh, just kind of testing to see kind of where you are at this stage. And Bhutan will learn a lot just from that very first race. So the results in Bhutan, Selma Poutsma to the quarterfinals. And again, we'll see Schulte not in this running of a 1,000. She'll be in the second version of the 1,000. And also the 1,500 for Schulte. Bhutan's second event will be the 500. And there's heat number three for the women's 1,000. Claudia Gagnon right there for Canada. Julie Latai of the United States and Ami Harai of Japan. And Senya Adamenko, the teenager from Ukraine. Those are the four. So the Olympian from the United States in Medfield, Massachusetts, Julie Latai, second position for the U.S. Ami Harai of Japan right now sets the early pace. Again, first and second, and then a maximum of two head on to the quarterfinals. Everybody else will to punch their ticket back through the repechage. So with this middle distance of 1,000 meters, you'll generally see the pace and the strategy pick up with about four, five laps to go. Gagnon exchanges for the lead away from Hirai. Latai for the U.S. still third. But tightly quartered. Coming up on three laps to go. Still Gagnon and Hirai. Latai slowed down. Think she has a crease on the inside. Can't get past Hirai. But a lap and a half to go. And there's the bell. Latai still third for the U.S. It's Gagnon and Harai 1-2. One last moment for Julie Latai of the U.S. And she is not going to get there. Gagnon and Harai fight her off. Latai tight third. Again, a maximum of two-thirds. We'll move on to the quarterfinals. We have eight heats. Well defended down the stretch by Harai of Japan. And 
No great opportunity. Looked like Latai's best chance to make that pass around Harai came with about a lap and a half to go. We'll check the time for Latai, 133.299. That will not be good enough no matter what happens the rest of these heats. Because that is already the, of the three heats, the slowest of the third place finishers so far. So uh, the tie will be forced to come through the repechage for the US. Start list for heat number four. Lee Yun, silver medal in Montreal, the first World Cup events. 30-year-old inside position here. Sofia Kanya from Hungary. There's a look at Ed Lee. Kanya, three-time Olympian from Hungary. Malika Yermek in Kazakhstan. And then we'll see a couple of newcomers for China. Talk about kind of the, the changing face of their squad, at least this week in Dresden. Not sure what their roster will look like next week, but Liu Wan Yu of China in Helmut 123, and Svea Rothi from Germany in her first World Cup event. She's in Helmut 115. Lee going about three wide to reclaim the lead from Kanya. And we'll see what type of speed and strategy that Yuan Yu of China has. In second position, we've seen some young Chinese skaters already on the men's squad in the prelims of the 1,000 fear very well. So we'll check on the depth and the opportunity that they get here in Dresden this weekend. And right now, Yu in qualifying position in that two hole behind Lee. Two laps to go. Kanye third, Yermak fourth, and here's the bell. Lee So Yun still in front. And Liu Wan Yu of China trying to hang on to second and contact. Couple of skaters go down. It looked like Sophia Kanye tried to make the inside pass. Looked like she was in position and then kind of skidded out and then slid into Liu Wan Yu. So that will likely be reviewed at the line. So we take a look at the highlight melt from heat number four. liaison on site at the venue in Dresden. We'll take a look and see if we can get some uh, an early potential look on what they may be looking at right there. They're looking at a potential penalty involving Kanya of Hungary against the Chinese skater and it appears as though it is still under review but there may not be a call necessary because it looked like Lou still finished second. So we'll check out the official results and see if that is the case here. So here are the results. No penalty, and Liu Wang Yu did finish second anyway, so she's automatically qualified through the quarterfinals anyway. Kanye right now is on the clock at 132 high. Eight total heats in this women's thousand meter. So we're halfway through, and now we're going to look at Corey Stoddard of the United States. And she's had a solid year for the U.S. Podium three times, two at times at this distance, both silvers. Bronze in the 1500 in Montreal on the first weekend. Here's like a Gabriella Toposka of Poland. Part of the mixed silver medal relay team at the Euros a couple of weeks ago for Poland. Chiara Bete of Italy right there in helmet 41. And Sidorko from Ukraine. Those are the four on the ice. Inside position for Stoddard in the U.S. And the Olympian from the United States. 
in the early lead. Metrically, Stoddard's best distance this year has been the 1500. She ranks inside the top five in that classification. Number three, as a matter of fact. And the pink goggles and helmet 10 for Corey Stoddard. And she gets sandwiched by a couple of skaters there. The pass by Topolska, but Stoddard easily reclaims it. Stoddard and Bette, 1-2, Topolska third. Overall, Stoddard right now sixth in the Crystal Globe of standings. With probably a realistic shot to get maybe to fifth before this World Cup season winds down. I mean, there's a big gap, but she still has an outside shot to catch Selma Pausma to finish top five. That would be an amazing year for Corey Stoddard. But first things first, Stoddard is trying to advance on to the quarterfinals here in the 1,000. She will with a top two finish in this heat. And the bell for Stoddard and company. Bente second, Topolska third. And the final corner for Stoddard, and she's through. So Stoddard, 132-7 in the quarterfinals for the U.S. teammate like Christian Santos Griswold of the United States it's easy if you're Corey Stoddard really a bit unfortunate that you can almost become a little bit overshadowed by the great success of Santos Griswold this year but uh, Corey Stoddard is catching a lot of people's attention with just her consistency and her growth you know year over year I mean now she's become a, a podium contender every week there are the results. Stoddard into the quarters along with Bette. No chance with that 133-3 for Topolska. So she'll have to come through the rep shot. So five of the eight heats are in the books. Three more to go. And there's a, the start list for heat number six. Stormowska of Poland, part G1. Took silver in the 500, the four continents for Korea. Yana Khan, the Olympian from Kazakhstan. Kurokawa from Japan. And Barbara Samoji from Hungary. And Park Ji Won. Kim Gilly will be in the next heat. Archer Kozlowski, the starter, gets us away in this sixth heat of eight in the women's thousand. Yana Khan in that lavender helmet. The early lead for the native of Kyrgyzstan. Now represents Kazakhstan. Rokawa right now in front for Japan. First and second on the quarterfinals. And this is turning into a race. Swapping leaders every lap, and it's back to Park G1. Stormowska goes inside up to second. Brooklyn Kurokawa back to third position, but this is anybody's race right now. Stromowska drafting off the park. Two laps left. Kurokawa lost her balance a bit, slithers wide and lost some serious ground. So now Yana Khan up to third position. Inside the final lap. Park and Stormosco will navigate the last corner and they will move through to the quarterfinals. 
Donna Khan, 132-8. That is not going to be good enough to move through potentially, so she'll have to come through the repechage also. Finish, Park G1, Camilo Stormowska. That is 1-2, and they're on their way to the quarterfinals. So a couple of heats left now. We'll get a look at the final results, and then our first look at the current Crystal Globe leader on the women's side, Kim Gilly. I told you earlier we'd kind of run through where the main contenders for the Crystal Globe, where they will be racing this weekend. Kim Gilley is actually racing both thousands this weekend. She will not be racing the 1500. Kristen Santos will be in the 1500 and then in the second offering of the thousand. Xander Velsbor, we've already seen her in this thousand. We'll see her in the 500. Hannah Desmet will be in the 1500 and the second running of the thousand. Poutsma in the 500 and this version of the thousand those are the top five Bhutan we've already seen in this thousand she'll be in the 500 as well and Schulting in the 1500 and then the other thousand so it's interesting that Kim Gilly will be the only skater of those seven the top five plus Bhutan and Schulting will be only in the 1,000. She'll be in both of them. Everybody else kind of scatters across the other distances. So here is Kim Gilly in helmet number four in this nine-lap race. And she is a tactician, and she is a lightning bolt when she wants to make a move. So the fact that she is at the back of the pack here, no problem for Gilly. And she can lap the field and go from last to first, sometimes in as short as three quarters of a lap, about what we're seeing here. So with no resistance, Gilly from the back of the front. And the to France right now, second. Song Giroux of China right now, third. A little bit of connection there between Song and Daudette. And Song now shuffled to the back, but Kim Gilly in the clear. Song still having some trouble regaining her footing. Daudet second. Janeke Dendalka, Belgium, is right now in third position. And Tamara Takaroba of Slovakia, fourth. So there's Kim Gilly, the 19-year-old. Top-ranked 1,500-meter skater, number four at this distance, which, again, she'll be racing in both 1,000 races this weekend. And Kim Gilly... Absolutely no, no problem. No, that seconds. Time for Gilly, really irrelevant. Slow time overall for that race, but again, time doesn't matter whatsoever. Gilly got out front with about five laps to go and then just kind of throttled back, saving the energy for a big weekend. More heat to go here in the women's thousand. Kim Gilly nuzzling her way through to the quarterfinals with no issues. And the results right there. Gilly and Audet. And now the last of these eight heats on the women's side. And right now the time to beat if you're thinking about a third place finish. It's first and second, then a maximum of two third-place finishers. Again, we've seen you know, no penalty advancement so far of any kind in either of these uh, men's or women's 1,000 meters so far, anyway. The slowest of the facet two times 
is 132-7. There's Ariana Valsapina. Michelle Velzebor, and there's Valentina Eschik of Croatia. Marie Stinge of Canada that rounds out the four. So Michelle Velzebor, the younger sister to Xander Velzebor. She's in helmet 16. Valsapina, the younger sister to Martina Valsapina, the four time Olympian. So would imagine you know the time to beat if you're going to finish third, you know what you know, 130 feels like in this race, and that's about what it will take if you finish third to avoid the repishage. There goes Velsbor to the inside. Tough path that gets through. Steams right now is second. Brampton, Ontario native. And closing in on three laps to go. Val Sapina third. They're coming up on two laps to go, and they're right at about 131 and a half pace, if my math is correct. Here's the bell. Belzebor and Steens, one, two. Val Sapina third. And out of this final corner, Val Sapina in third position. And Val Sapina crossed the line 132.9. So Vilsborn and Steens are through. And, and 132.9 is just going to be a little soft. It won't be fast enough by about two tenths of a second. So unofficially, that would send Levesque and Kanya into the quarterfinals and avoiding the dungeon of the repage. But again, that is unofficial. Velsbor taking down her heat. And now the official graphic, there it is. 132-931 for Val Sapina in third position. Will not be fast enough. So through the repassage for her and Asik and the others, but Velsbor and Steenge avoid it. And head on straight to the quarterfinals. So that's it for the women's heats in the thousand. We've already seen the prelims for the men in the thousand. I will jump straight into the men's heats here in the thousand. And continue on here in Dresden, day one of three. They call the skaters to the line, and we now jump into the men's thousand. There'll be seven heats. 35 skaters, five apiece. Marcus Howard and Stephen Dubois side by side here in the opening heat. First and second and a maximum of three move on to the quarterfinals. So there is Dubois right now, the Crystal Globe leader by a couple of points in Park Jiwon. Marcus Howard of the U.S. takes it out quickly. Li Kun from China. He was impressive in his debut race a little bit earlier today. Emergev and Li Jung Min round out the five here in this opening heat for the men's thousand. The lead to Li Kun. Dubois nestles in second. And Marcus Howard for the U.S. at the back of the pack. But a tight cluster. Likun, little peak, just past his right leg. He wants to see where the competition is. He knows it's very likely going to be Dubois right behind him. 
Lee Kuhn, the 19-year-old from China, world junior bronze medalist in the 500 last year, and he gets passed by Dubois with about a lap and a half to go. But again, first and second automatically to the quarterfinals, and this is where Lee really defended well in the previous race we saw. He's trying to fight off Lee Jung-Min and trying to do it in this final corner. He loses ground and comes to the stretch. It looked like Lee got up there. So Lee Jung-Min of Korea just looked like he outstretched Lee Kuhn of China for second place. Dubois will take the first of the men's thousand heats. Stephen Dubois, smart race. Didn't want to let Marcus Howard of the U.S. jump out to a big lead. Dubois took charge a couple laps in. No trouble the rest of the way. And it is Lee Jung-Min of Korea up for second. Going to get a maximum of three third-place finishers. Also move on to the quarterfinals. And again, we'll see seven heats. Start list for Heat 2, highlighted by Speckenhauser and Roussel. Tune Boer, 22-year-old from the Netherlands, who snatched silver in the 500 at the Euros a couple of weeks ago. And there is Speckenhauser, right now 10th in the Crystal Globe standings, just one point behind Wang Dae-hoon of Korea, nine points behind Yen Van Troot of the Netherlands, and Van Troot out this week. Had an injury issue a few weeks back, so no Jens Van Troots over the course of this weekend here in Dresden. No word on if he'll be able to race next week in Poland as they call the skaters to the line. Roussel, second position for Canada, but Beat Speckenhauser to that corner. And the lead will be shuffled to Boer. Who capitalized and worked on the inside pass then both. So Boer, Roussel, Speckenhauser, one, two, three. So Ira for Korea. And Toprak Efe Roglo of Turkey. Those are the five. Boer and Speckenhauser at the front. So you're out fighting on the inside. Boer gets knocked off a bit and he falls from the lead pack all the way to the back. Roussel and now Speckenhauser pull apart a bit from So Yiram. Oh, a little bit of slippage there by Roussel. Almost spun around, kept his balance. Speckenhauser did well not to run up right into him. There's the bell for those two. And because of that near mid-ice collision, I think Roussel and Speckenhauser with this lead won't even bother. Just kind of ease their way around and not knock each other out of the quarterfinals right there. So they will finish 1-2. Big sprint to finish to, for that third spot. Boer, at least unofficially, might have just gotten up there ahead of Soyera. collision between Speckenhaus and Roussel came very late in the race. Let's see if they grab it on this highlight here and see exactly what happened. It just looked like a, yeah, it looked like Roussel just kind of slipped a little bit, pulled back, and Speckenhauser saw it coming. Good awareness by Luca. 
And then they just kind of took it easy the rest of the way. It looks like those two are discussing what nearly happened right there. So credit to Roussel for keeping his balance, but I think more credit goes to Speckenhauser for uh, recognizing it quickly and then figuring out kind of his best plan of attack to avoid a nasty collision that would have knocked both of those skaters out of the race. The first two men's thousand heats are in the book, and now the start list for heat number three, Kayla Park of the U.S., Quentin Faircock of France, inside position to Selyer for Poland. This is Madia Galik Metov, the other two. Good cheering section for the Polish skaters already on hand here in day one in Dresden. Faircock. Five across the line, and away we go. Galek Metzoff opens things up, and Faircock from the outside starting position hustles his way to the lead. That's one way to quickly overcome a bad starting position, but again, in a 1,000 meter race, it's, I don't wanna say totally irrelevant, but it's mostly irrelevant. Certainly in a 500 meter race, it's a big, big deal. Selye third, Park fourth. Susmati back in the pack. So Park Juwan coming up in a couple of races. Pietro CL. We had a, an historic European Championships a couple of weeks ago. We'll see him in Heat six here in the thousand. Approaching two laps to go for Kerkhoff. Galek Metzoff right now second, and then Selyer, but still Faircock in front. And the battle now is going to be for second place. Caleb Park of the United States gets himself in position, then quickly falls back and loses it. And Faircock finishing first, Galek Metzoff second, Selye third. And Faircock taking down his heats through to the quarterfinals. Two very non problematic races for him so far today. Sellier's time will have him on the clock. He'll take a maximum of three third place finishers to the quarterfinals. Now, time for Roberts Kruzbergs to lead. This Quintent onto the ice. Let's see how Kruzbergs will fare, trying to move on to the quarterfinals as well.
Lee Jin Yu of China right now in Bergs. And then Pierre Gillet. Roberts Cruzberg's good history here in Dresden last year on the podium in the thousand. Trying to get back to Lucas Kuzinski from Poland in this heat as well. Big fan favorite of the fans who have come out already here in Dresden. Kuzinski now up to fourth. So inside the bell, like Pierre Gillet and Cruzberg's 1-2. Kuzinski will be a little bit short, but time will matter. 126.09 for Kuzinski. And Jordan Pierre Gillet, who has been the star 500 meter level over the course of this year. Three different goals for Pierre Gillet, the 500. We'll take down this 1,000 meter heat. So he and Cruzberg's will head on to the quarterfinals. Results for Jordan Pierre Gillet. Locating some fans of his. Kuzinski's 126 flat. Let's see if that's good enough to get him through. So Pierre Gillet and Cruzberg's into the quarters. So three more heats to go, and here is right now the Crystal Globe leader on the men's side, Park G1. Yama of Japan, Zaksibaya of Hausman and Zhang round out the five in Heat Five. Park G1 right now two points behind Dubois for the Crystal Globe, but Park is the defending champion from last year, but much, much tighter. Kim Gun Wu were the first couple of World Cups. Now Dubois has passed him by a couple of points. Be a tremendous finish. And Park Juwan is loving the competition as fierce as it is. He's in the middle of your screen right now, fourth as we get underway in this nine lap thousand meter race. And how about Park blasting from fourth all the way to the front? That did not take long. Now he can control this race from the lead. Hausman, a little look behind him to see where Yokoyama and Zaksibayev are. Zhang back in fifth for China. Well, clearly the strategy for Park Jiwan was don't mess around in the middle. Use some energy early, and then you can kind of scale back if you need to. Because with two World Cup events left and then the World Championships, there's a lot of money on the line and not a lot of time left. And if you're two points behind, every race matters for Dubois and Park Ji-won and Angino and Kim and the others. Final lap. Park and Yokoyama right now 1-2, and Yokoyama just kind of riding right alongside Park, and they will finish 1-2 in a photo. And photo as well for third involving Zhang and Hausman. Look to the naked eye like Park Juwan did get up to win it. We'll see what the photo bears out.
big early move by Park Ji Hwa, and that was within what, the first two laps of that race or so. Then it was just a matter of Yokoyama tethered himself right to Park Ji Hwan, and it did look like Park Ji Hwan got there first. But they both will advance to the quarterfinals. It's been a very clean, knock on wood, very clean set of races so far. We've seen only one penalty. We've seen no advancements due to penalty. Not a lot of, well, a couple of slips, but the ice seems to be holding up rather well so far. Park Juwan does indeed take that heat. So two more to go. And Pietro Siegel. For what? We talked about the history that he made at the European Championships a couple of weeks ago. Swept all three individual events, which had only been done once at the Euros in its history. And Siegel did it in electrifying form. Now he's only been on one World Cup podium this year, bronze in the thousand, the very first week in Montreal. You would have to imagine that that weekend in Gdansk just gives him layers of confidence coming into the final couple of World Cup events and then the World Championships in the Netherlands here in a little more than a month. So be curious to see what kind of carryover there is for Seagal. Right now he's in the all blue, third position. Foskis, Nowinski, Collins, and Bosdag are in this race with him. And Nowinski right now setting the pace. I mean, Seagal, I mean, he won each of those races in very different styles, very different ways. And this is a guy who's been around the sport for a long time, but it was a show-stopping weekend for him in Gdansk. And he's up to second, and now takes the lead away from Nowinski. The bell lap for Seagal, and now it's Nowinski right on his blades, pulling away from Foskis and Collins, and it will be Seagal and Nowinski finishing first and second. the ability of Pietro Siegel based on you know past history of the last couple of years but so far this World Cup season things just haven't quite clicked for him but when you're when you're that good and at that level sometimes all you need is an event like he had similar to what Santos Griswold had at the four continents back for the United States you know sweeping events there Siegel did the same thing at the European Championships and that might, I mean, it would be curious to see you know, how, how the form looks for Seagal against full global competition this weekend. Again, nothing against the Euros, but you're not going against everybody in the world. Certainly competition was very, very good. But now you get everybody back, with the exception of a couple who are skipping or one or two that might be injured. This will be an interesting test for Pietro Siegel based on what he did in Poland. Start list for the last of the seven Demeter heats for the men. Natalini, Miata, Wesley Park of the U.S., Tiboris of Hungary, and those are the five, along with Rivero Merschak of Belgium. Coming now into this final heat, they're taking a maximum of three third place finishers. The slowest of the three that right now have qualified is Lukas Kaczynski of Poland at 126.069. So you need to be inside 126.069 if you finish third in this race to move through to the quarters. And that might be on the minds of some of these Racers as we get underway. Miata, Natalini, 
Rivero Mareshock, one, two, three. Wesley Park for the U.S. four. A little slip, and down goes Rivero Mareshock, untouched. But he's down and out of the race. So that puts Wesley Park now in qualifying position, potentially based on time. Tibor is right behind him in fourth. Still Miata and Natalini coming up on three laps to go. So it's Miata, Natalini right on him. Checks over his shoulder to see what kind of room there is between him and Park. Park yet to make his move. You don't want to have to sit and rely on third and hope your time is good. You'd like to get a second and not have to worry about it at all. There's the bell. Natalini defending that second position. Park will finish third, and Miata effectively goes wire to wire. So Shogo Miata takes down the last heat. Natalini finishing second. Park 126.03. If that time is accurate, and again, they will readjust it as they came across the line, but 126.03 would be good enough for Park by three hundredths, give or take. But again, we'll unofficially take a look at the official time when it comes through and see if it is indeed good enough. It's going to be very close. There's the fall by Rivera Marshock. That opened up third position for Wesley Park. Never made a real... Aggressive attempt to get past Natalini. You see how aggressive he is coming to the line right there and stretching out that right blade because every thousandth of a second matters to hopefully avoid the repishage. So Miata's in, Natalini is in. Let's check out the numbers. And yes, 126.014 for Parks. So they did adjust the time even faster than what it came across when he crossed the line. So Wesley Park will move through to the quarterfinals and avoid the repishage as Miata and Natalini finish 1-2. So Wesley Park is through into the quarterfinals for the U.S. So the big names are through as well. Dubois, Pierre Gillet, Park Jiwan, Seagal. And the qualifiers by time, Wesley Park, Radek Fajkas, and Zhang Jinji of China. So they are on to the quarterfinals. Everybody else will head through the repishage. So we'll take a little break. Be back in about 18 minutes' time with the women's quarterfinals of the 1,500 meters. You are watching ISU's coverage of World Cup Dresden. Stick with us.
ICU's coverage of World Cup Dresden continues on day one. Nice youthful crowd in attendance, having a good time. Ice has been resurfaced, ready now to resume. We'll jump straight into the women's 1500 meter quarterfinals. Seven heats, 39 total skaters we will see a bit later on in the heat five. The return to World Cup ice for Suzanne Schulting, so stay tuned for that. But first and foremost, we'll open things up with Courtney Siro. In helmet number two, right now the world number nine. And trying to get on a podium for the first time this year, but picked up some confidence certainly at the Four Continents, did so a couple of times, but three World Cup golds last year individually for Soro, but so far things have not just broken in her favor yet, but still some time for the Canadian Olympian from Beijing. Eunice Lee of the United States, Diana Mikalchuk of Ukraine, Hedvig Hill of Norway, along with Yara Van Kirkhoff, the two-time Olympian and the Olympic medalist, first ever short track female Olympic medalist representing the Netherlands. And Rebecca Zilse Nemetz rounding out the field. There is Soro right now in front. And as we take a look as we get this race underway, as a matter of fact, they have reshuffled the roster of skaters here. So we expected to have six coming out of this break in this opening. Now we have five. So some different skaters from some of the ones that I mentioned earlier. We will see Van Kirkhoff and still say to Met along with Soro, but now we have Alonia. Volkovitskaya from Kazakhstan and Annabelle Green representing Great Britain. Her mom and dad both Olympians. She actually grew up in British Columbia. So that is Green in helmet 125 representing Great Britain. Her dad was a short tracker for Great Britain. Her mom was a star Canadian short tracker. Mentioned that they did shuffle things around as we had evidently a skater or two fallouts or force the uh, 
reshuffling of the uh, lineup cards for these heats. Suzanne Schulting still listed in a heat five as we get a look right there of Gloria Uriati from Italy. One silver in the 1500 at the Euros just a couple of weeks ago. So she comes in in good form. Olga Tikhanova from Kazakhstan inside position. Juliana Dubrova of Ukraine. Toth from Hungary. Zhang Jinning from China. And Kutor Zuski from Germany. Those are the six in the second heat of the women's 1500 quarterfinals. You go back to the European Championships a couple of weeks ago. It was Elisa Confortola and Gloria Iriati finishing gold silver in the 1500. A shocker that was. We'll say the Met earned bronze in that race. We saw Will say Nemet advance on to the semifinals in the opening heat of these 1500s. So Dubrova gets things rolling. 21 year old Olympian from Ukraine. 13 and a half laps. Uriati right now seconds. Zhang goes from fifth. Swings still wide, continues the pursuit, and Zhang will grab the lead. Uriati second, and the economy now third. Anna DeSmets, along with Confortola, will be in the next heats of these quarterfinals. Yoriati back in the lead. A little gap now from the front three to the back three. And a maximum of five third place finishers onto the semis. And work to do if you're Toth, Kuntzorzewski, or Dubrova. The back half of the field. There's the bell. Yoriati and Zhang one, two. And Tikhanova will finish third. Unofficial results, Ioriati and Zhang. We talked about the great success of Pietro Sigel at the European Championships. Really all of Team Italy had enormous, massive results at the Euros. Women's side as well. Women's relay team won silver. Seagal swept the individual events on the men's side. Confortola and Ioriati, gold, silver in the 1500. And again, as I mentioned, the women's relay finished silver. So confidence should be everywhere for the Italians this week and in the next, especially as they go back onto that same ice in Gdansk. But I'm always just really intrigued to see if you know, if the success and the confidence does carry over from race to race, event to event, a couple of kind of mitigating factors. One, a couple of weeks in between races. And then number two, this now welcomes back the entire short track uh, community. But again, confidence in oneself is uh, a very powerful thing. Seven overall heats. We're ready for number three. And Hannah Smet, who checks in outside shots at the uh, Crystal Globe. She right now is ranked number four, 689 points. She's only six points behind Alexander Pelzebor. But Kim Gilley has 865. Santos Griswold, 805. So a lot of things need to break right for DeSmet. But DeSmet this weekend will be racing in this 1500 and then in the Second offering of the thousand. She is more than capable of winning both of these events this weekend. And if she does, that will set her up for a potential Crystal Globe charge over the last World Cup event and then into the World Championships. 
But she must start now in this met. Right there in the center of your screen, third position in the number three helmets. But this is her best distance, the 1500. She's ranked number two in the world right now. Third in the thousand. Olympic bronze medalist at that thousand meter distance as well. Holly Hoyland representing Great Britain and helmet 126. This is her first action since the World Championships of last year. Park Ji Yoon for Korea. Right now at the back of the pack, but again, a 13 and a half lap race. Elisa Confortola, European gold medalist at the 1500. Right now leading the way. Hoyland second. Anna Sokolowska of Poland. Right in the middle of that group. And now we start to see Desmet and a tap on the accelerator a bit. And there goes Hannah Desmet out to the front. And Park ji goes right with her. When you talk about carryover of confidence and successes from the European Championships, we'll see what it means here for Confortola. This is a, a challenging quarterfinal heat in terms of depth, especially with the top two, Desmets and Park. Confortola right now third. A gap in front of her, a gap behind her to Hoyland. With some, some ice to make up. There is the bell. Desmets and Park still 1-2. And Confortola not in the picture. And Hannah Smet left hand down, navigates that last corner, and claims her heat. Park ji Yoon second, Confortola third. 2.22.06 for Confortola. May give her a chance to move through via time. If you're handed this met, you're probably not thinking big picture at all. A lot of races to go between now and the crowning and lifting of the Crystal Globe. And it's not as though you're 30 points off the pace. I mean, there's a pretty good chunk, uh, 176 for Desmet, But it's a race-by-race race proposition for her. So control what she can, which is... Move on to the semifinals, get to an A final, and roll the dice and try and win those races that will be in front of you over the course of this weekend. You certainly will need some help. You'll be going head to head against some, but not all, of the skaters who are in front of you in the standings. So now on to Heat Four. Ariana Seagal, so we men kind of highlight this grouping. And that now puts Suzanne Schulting on deck for the first time in this World Cup season. There's Lisa Eckstein, native of Dresden, 23 years old. Yet to have a top 10 finish individually. This would be a pretty good spot to do it. So we men in the 18 helmet, second in the world classification, the 1,000. She's here in this 1,500 meter race. And the rest of the field with Seagal and So and Eckstein, Lam Cheng Yan of Hong Kong, Li Zhuan of China, Song Yifei also of China. Those are the six in the race. And Lee sets the early pace. But again, pace is a bit of an overstatement in the 1500 meter races. So 
lap times dropped considerably from you know, sometimes the 14s, 13s, down into the 9s, high 8s by the time this race winds down. Seagull from the back in the blue uniform. Jumps to the lead. And so we men now hopscotch is past here. And so in front, Seagull settles in second. And we have Song right now third. And Eckstein for Germany right now at the back of the pack. And Eckstein now thinking about making a move, but still one big peloton at this stage. You can just kind of watch Eckstein the back of the pack. She's, she's wanting to go forward. No real opportunities yet. And now Lee kind of zigzags from fifth up to fourth, and Eckstein's still waiting for her time. But up front, it is Zoe Min and Seagal, one, two, song third. And Lee trying to catch up to that lead pack. Coming up on the bell lap for So Seagal and company. And there's the bell. So and Seagal still one, two. Song sitting third. Last corner. And So will win it. Seagal will finish second. And Song will finish third. So there are the results of Heat 4. So we men, Ariana Seagal. And now the start list for quarterfinal Heat number five. And a welcome back to Suzanne Schulting, the six time Olympic medalist, three time gold medalist, two time world overall champion, and making her debut performance this World Cup season here in Dresden. Took a well-deserved break, had a little bit of an injury scare several months ago, has healed up, and here she is really targeting the World Championships coming up next month. And in the Crystal Globe champion number one helmet. Brand new, glittery, and all she goes, Suzanne Schulting back on World Cup ice. So we'll see how Schulting appears here today. And again, we said the same thing with Kim Bhutan earlier today in her debut of this World Cup season. You know, they know their skills, they know their bodies, they know their training, but nothing can replicate in practice races, real races against the top skaters in the world. So this will be kind of the, the last area of kind of getting an idea where you are and how your body feels and the sense of timing. It will all come back and it will generally come back pretty quickly, but you know, there is a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit, some cobwebs can be kind of hanging out in some corners. So then a Blay and Helmet 13 for Canada. She's right now sitting fourth. 
Rina Yamada from Japan, Eunice Lee of the United States, Kanai of Japan, Hedvig Hille of Norway. Those are the six in heat number five. But all eyes right now on Schulten in the orange number one helmet. Her first World Cup event since the World Championships of last year. But great to have her back. As dominant of a skater as there was in the sport for a couple of years. And now she's coming back. And the landscape's changed certainly a little bit. But you want to talk about how great this sport is now with all the great skaters. Almost helping as Bly spins out dangerously. And she's down. And that will be one of our first reviews of the day. As you might imagine, the camera train right on number one, Suzanne Schulting. There's the spin out by Bly about midway through the race, but Schulting's form, quite good, you can say, in her first race back. And boy, the strength of the, the women skaters right now with the emergence, especially this year, of Kristen Santos Griswold, Kim Gilley following up a fantastic year last year. Phil Zabor to Smet, and now you have the return of Bhutan, and now the return of Suzanne Schulte. And they're taking a look at a potential penalty here as we get ready now for the official results to be revealed. And again, Schulte will be in the second running of the thousand later on this weekend so those are her first two events and she'll get kind of an idea of how she feels how the timing sets up Let's catch up with a lot of good friends as well but good to be back on the ice and there you see no penalty assessed no time for Danae Bly and Suzanne Schulting just like Kim Bhutan a successful return back to World Cup ice We'll see how much the field will have to reckon with her over the course of the week. And my gut is telling me quite a lot. Two more heats to go in the women's 1500. Shim Silki, a legend in this sport, trying to get back on a World Cup podium. One of five in this heat. TDV and Orr shots of the Netherlands in helmet 87. Chloe Olivier from France. Sarah Baksai from Hungary and Katarina Buric from Croatia. Those are the five. One more quarterfinal heat to come after this one. That will feature Christian Santos Griswold of the U.S. But this is where you would really love an opportunity to get a quick you know, 20 or 30 second comment from Bhutan, from Schulting on the ice for the first time this year. How did it feel? How does the body feel? What was what was the biggest adjustment, the biggest challenge? How how's your mind at this stage? We'll find that out in due time. And then from some of the other skaters like Santos Griswold, hey, what will it be like having like the full complement of outstanding short trackers? back on the ice. And 
They want to beat the best. They want to compete against the best. And almost all the best are now back, which is great for the sport. And should set things up. You give Bhutan and Schulte a couple of World Cup events. You look ahead to the World Championships in Rotterdam and how awesome that will be with everybody kind of revving up to, to perfect full form. What a, a weekend that'll be. But back to the action on the ice here, Van Orshot right now in the lead. Shim Suki right now fourth. And there goes the outside pass by Shim Suki, and that had power. So Shim out in front. Two time Olympian. Two-time Olympic medalist back in 2014 in the 1500 and the 1000. Overall champion back in 2014. Still with her history, with her kind of off the ice issues that slowed down her career for a time. She's still only 26 years old and a lot left in the tank for Shim Sook Hee. To the line they come, and it will be Shim. So Shim wins her heat. Van Orshot hangs on for second tight with Olivier. So Shim on to the semifinals. Leave one more quarterfinal race remaining here in the women's 1500. Shim Suki, solid race in the semis. Just kind of waiting to see, you know, if and when she makes the next step and gets back to regular A finals. Maybe that starts this weekend here in Dresden for Shim Suki. Van Orshot does finish second. The last quarterfinal heat will feature Kristen Santos Griswold of the U.S. Right now, number two in the Crystal Globe chase, 60 points behind Kim Gilly. Santos Griswold, and she has had the kind of year that her head coach, Stephen Goff, knew that she had in her, just kind of had to unlock the last little bits of uh, strategy and tactics and the confidence that came along with it. Santos Griswold has had a Phenomenal year for the U.S. Number two overall. At this distance, ranks number four in the world. Two skaters from Ukraine in this heat with Santos Griswold. Selyakova and Mikhailichuk. Busanova from Kazakhstan and Nakashima of Japan. Those are the five in this race. Santos Griswold will be racing in the second running of the thousand. Those are her two individual events. And again, Kim Gilley 60 points up on Santos Griswold for the Crystal Globe chase. Gilly is in her two individual events are both both thousands that will be run this weekend in Dresden. So the two Ukrainians right now setting things up. Santos Griswold, though, when she wants to command the race, she will. And that's been kind of the, the last phase in her development to become an absolute elite women's short track skater over the course of the last, it's really been over the last couple of years. The growth has been ongoing, but the, the big last steps have really occurred in the last 18 months or so for Santos Griswold. 
Yeah, still plenty of time to go in this race. She's just letting it evolve in front of her, staying out of trouble. Tom Busanova right now leading. Seliakova second. Nikolachuk third. And it's about the time when we'll see Santos Griswold make that attempt and probably pass the entire pack from her fourth place position. Inside four laps to go. Probably don't want to wait a whole lot longer for Santos Griswold, but again, you trust your speed. You know, that it takes just one quick burst and you're out ahead of everybody. And that's exactly what she does. And Nakashima smartly tethers herself to Santos Griswold and just takes the draft and coasts out of the front with her. So there's the bell. And this race is entirely Santos Griswold's to claim. And just that one easy maneuver by Santos Griswold clears the field. And Santos Griswold along with Nakashima moving through the semifinals. Uh, subtle little kind of head nod over toward the padding by Santos Griswold. Had a couple of weeks off. Back on the ice. Nice comfortable win in that race for her. So Santos Griswold takes her heat. Right back at it. So that's it for the women's 1500 quarterfinals. Semi-finals will be tomorrow. Repechage will as well. And now the men are on the ice for the same as we jump into the 1,500-meter men's quarterfinals. This will be the last individual event of this morning session here in Dresden. More coming up in the afternoon. And for the men, there's... The look at the first seven racers out on the ice. Scheduled to have eight heats, a total of 55 skaters. And there's a look at Yerkebulan Shabakanov, Kazakhstan. Olympian in Pyeongchang in 2018. Yashi Kosai of Japan. And Dennis Nikisha in this race as well. Again, he's known much more as a sprinter. was the top ranked 500 meter skater last year, as a matter of fact. World champion as well. Nikisha, though, in this 1500. He's in helmet 11, second from the right on your screen. Furkan Akar, first ever short track Olympian from Turkey. He is in helmet 31. And it's Nikolai Bjerk from Norway, right now in 186 out in front. Lu Zhu of Hong Kong in the Right 114. So those are the seven in this first quarter final for the men. We look ahead, we'll see Stan DeSmet coming up in heat four, William D'Angelo in five. Kim Gun Woo, our first look at him today. He'll be in heat seven. There are eight total heats in this 1500 for the men. So 
It's Lou Janjo. Taking it out pretty hard here early. Not something you see in 1,500 meters all that often, but now about four and a half laps to go. See how much gas he has left in the tank as the pack begins to gang up on him. And that's a car first man past him. So Furkana car. Jamakanov right now second. Nikisha back in fifth. And now Nikisha up to third and down goes, I believe that was Lou is, who went down. There's the bell. We will have one potential penalty. They will review a moment from about two laps back. And a lot of movement into that last corner and getting to the line first is Hayashi. So a lot of weaving, a lot of zigging and zagging that last kind of back straight. Shamakanov second, Nikisha third. They'll take first and second automatically to the semifinals, the maximum of three third place finishers. Finish. Say Hayashi. We'll get there to the line and unofficially into the semifinals. Hayashi's mom, an Olympian for Japan back in 1998, and one of the few video reviews we've seen so far today. Here's Balaj Kober, our referee on the ice this weekend from Hungary. Taking a look at a potential penalty involving Kazakhstan and Hong Kong. And Hashi comfortable he's not involved in any of this, so down the tunnel he goes. He doesn't need to see the official results to know that he's into the semifinals. But if my memory serves, we've only had one penalty today and it did not impact any extra advancements. This has been a, a well-paced opening day in Dresden so far. Fans enjoying themselves up on the video board, waving flags of their country skaters. German contingent on hand, waiting very patiently to see how this will play out. Well, it's never a good sign when you see the referee with the clipboard in hand. We'll see if there is a penalty assessed, and there actually is not in this one. So the results will stand. Hayashi Shamakanov 1-2, and Akisha 218 3 So we'll move on to the second of eight quarterfinals here in the men's 1500. And inside position, Pascal Dion, two-time Olympian from Canada. Rest of the field, you have War Van Damme of Belgium, Etienne Bastier from France, Frederick Pedersen from Norway, Daniel Yoon out of Potomac Speed Skating Club for the U.S. One World Cup event last year for Yoon, he's 18 years of age. At the back of the pack for the United States, Kazuki Yoshinaga from Japan, and Asen Giroff 
from Bulgaria. Those are the seven in this second quarterfinal. And it's Bastier right now out in front with Van Damme behind him in second place. 13 and a half laps. You know, a couple of years ago was the world overall number two. It's been on one podium so far this year. That happened in the last World Cup event in Seoul. Taking bronze in the thousand behind Dubois and Wang Dai Hoon. And there goes Yoon from the United States bursting out to the lead. Inside six laps to go. Yellow box in that video review indicates they will take a look at some contact, a potential infraction. Still Yoon for the U.S. out front. Yoshinaga second. Dion is now up to third position for Canada. Now let's see what Yoon has left. He's being challenged right now by Yoshinaga. Just kind of barrels right by him on the inside. You know, gliding wider is Dion. And Dion now swings far wide and will pass them both. There's the bell. And it is Pascal Dion out front. Yoon battling hard. Falls back, though, into third position behind Yoshinaga. That's going to be where he finishes. But again, they'll take a, a couple of looks at some points of contact in this race. Unofficially, Dion, Yoshinaga, and then Yoon, one, two, three. Pretty game effort, though, by the young 18-year-old from the U.S. And we're getting indications as you take a look at some of the replays from that last quarterfinal that each of the potential incidents had now been cleared away, and there will be no calls, no penalties. So it appears as though the results will stand. There's Dion. Again, you still see on the screen though the yellow boxes are there, but we're getting word that they may have been both cleared up in terms of no penalties assessed. But we'll wait on the official results. set of skaters are on the ice and there they are and indeed no penalties so Yoon 216 741 Dion and Yoshinaga move on to the semifinals and they'll take a maximum of three third place finishers so Yoon right now is on the clock start list for the third quarter final Itzhak Dilat took bronze in the 1500 at the Euros a couple of weeks ago. Two-time Olympian from the Netherlands. See Peter Yazapati is going to have a birthday coming up on a Wednesday. He'll turn 22. Happy early birthday to him, his older sister of two-time Olympian. There's Andrea Casanelli. Won a couple of medals in Beijing, part of a pair of relays for Italy. And in helmet, 188, right now toward the back of the pack on the inside, that's Dietrich Varklis from Switzerland, who indicates on his X handle with formerly Twitter that he's a part-time photographer from Canada and Switzerland and an almost professional speed skater. Barclays in helmet 188 is on the track here representing Switzerland in World Cup Dresden. It's Delatz in helmet 23 in second position. Zhang Bohao of China who's new to their World Cup team here in Dresden. Right now he takes the reins. 
today from Ukraine. We see him basically at every World Cup event. Follow Sponsivics from Hungary, his teammates. So that is the field in the third quarter final. A couple of skaters go down, and that one of those skaters is the almost professional speed skater. And Dietrich Varklis. So he and Casanelli go down. They will have a look at that one. So they skate on. Zhang, Jazapati, Hyundai, one, two, three. Casanelli picked up a gold last year here in Dresden as part of the mixed relay team for Italy. So there are some skaters who have some pretty good history on this ice from a year ago. Pontifex part of the bronze 5,000 meter men's relay team last year here on this ice. So these five jostling it out. Hyundai falls off the pace. There's the bell, and it's like a lot swings wide. It at least get into qualifying position. He's in the second. Zhang still in front. Tight little last corner to navigate, and Delat will hang on to second place. So good work by Zhang coming across in seconds. And he's through to the semifinals. Well, we see another successful race by yet another young skater on Team China. Again, their roster's a little bit of turnover from the last couple of World Cups to what we're seeing this weekend in Dresden. With the Lou brothers not in Dresden this week, providing now some opportunities for some others to get some ice time in the senior circuit. And think about how capitalizing on that. So he will move on to the semifinals. They're taking a look at a couple of potential incidents from that race one perhaps on Varaklis from Switzerland right there he just saw at the tail end of that shot there it is kind of wobbling his way through might have been nudged off a little bit we'll see and it does appear as though they're will likely be a penalty on Varkley's the skater from Switzerland. They're also taking a look at a potential penalty, either Hungary on Ukraine or Ukraine on Hungary. They're taking a look, but that may have been cleared away. So wait on the official results. Valentine's Day in a couple of days, right? Love in the air. And the results and the penalty is assigned to Dietrich Varklis. But does not impact the order of finish or advancements on to the semifinal. So Zhang and Delat are officially through. And we'll take a look at what they saw on the penalty for the illegal late pass charge to uh, Varklis. Right in there. And he took out Casanelli with him. So eight quarterfinals. This is number four coming up. Stan is met. Had a successful voyage to the Euros a couple of weeks ago. Two bronze medals, one in the 500, one in the 1,000. There's a look at DeSmet, who right now ranks number 11. One World Cup podium so far this year, but plenty talented to turn things up over the last couple of World Cup events and the World Championships. So the Smets in the 12 helmets.
Brendan Corey from Australia, Sej Paul from the Czech Republic, Joshua Ka from New Zealand, Zenura Tatasi from Turkey, Yuyan Peng of China, and Mattia Antonioli from Italy right now in fifth position. So those are the seven on the ice in quarterfinal number four. By rankings, at least this year anyway, this is Desmet's best distance, the 1500. Although you go back to last year, Stan Desmet, world silver medalist in the thousand behind Park Ji Wong. Tony Oli right now in the lead for Italy. He's been in the World Cup circuit for about eight years now. 27 years of age, one podium, part of a relay in Turin back in 2019. So in the 173, that's Liu Yanpeng of China, another skater who has got kind of knocked off his bearings a little bit, and now down goes one skater there and that kind of clears up the field a bit. Stan is met right now out front. Taktasi was the one who went down. Antonioli right now second, Brennan Corey third. And Joshua Ka from New Zealand right now fourth. Now a little bit of a wobble there by Antonioli. The bell sounds, and the assistant referees in the video booth will have their work cut out. Little jiggle right there by Desmet going around that first corner into the last lap, but maintains his balance and just nudges Corey at the line. We've seen cleaner races from Stan Desmet and company, but he did well not to fall and claims unofficially his quarterfinal. I'm curious to see on some of these replays here. We've complimented, you know, the, the fact that the ice has held up pretty well. I haven't been a whole lot of slips. But now we saw a number, upwards of, what, seven or eight 1,500-meter women's quarterfinals, and now we're getting toward the back end of the men's 1,500 quarters. So it, you can certainly understand that the ice is now getting chewed up just over the last half hour of racing they will resurface it after this 1500 is done and get ready for the the mixed relay quarterfinals that'll be the last event coming up in our morning session here in Dresden but we're now just beginning to see it a few more slips a few more cut-ups and you wonder if it might be at least in in part ice related at this stage Some work to do in the video booth here with a couple of potential penalties they're taking a look at. One is a possible penalty involving the skater from Turkey, Taktasi, on the Chinese skater Liu. They're also taking a look at one involving Taktasi against Brendan Corey. see Taktasi in the 134. Kind of looking back as he lost his balance and contact made with Liu. So Balch covered with some help determining exactly how to adjudicate those potential incidents. So maybe taking a look at a potential penalty involving Corey against Antonioli.
Four more quarterfinals to come. See William Dangeno of Canada coming up in the next one. Kim Gun Woo, a couple of quarterfinals from now. So we'll see if we perhaps get our first advancements of this entire opening day here in Dresden. We've only seen a couple of penalties, no advancements as a result so far. This might change. So awaiting the official results. Some, yeah, some anxious faces over there. What is the result going to be? And here they come. And we will get our first advancement, and it will be Liu Yen Pang of China, who will be advanced to the semifinals. Two penalties you see assessed. One on Brennan Corey of Australia, the other on Tatasi of Turkey. So the newcomers for Team China succeeding so far. Moving through. Took a penalty to move Liu Yen Pang in, but that's the way short track works. And Here's the penalty charge against Tatsasi. Skater 134, far left of your screen, right in there. And that is the reason why Liu got moved through. On that penalty charge against Tatsasi, Liu was in second position, which was qualifying position for the semifinal. So that's the reason for the advancement. And then the other penalty here on Brennan Corey did not result in any advancement. So. Liu Yen Peng into the semifinals as well. And there's the start list for quarterfinal number five. William Dangeno has had a breakout year for Canada. There's Kito Watanabe, the veteran from Japan. Dangeno in the 33 helmet. Gray as he breaks out front. He's number three in the Crystal Globe at this stage. Been on five World Cup podiums this year. Two times gold. One in Montreal in the 1500, and then one gold in the 1500 in the second running in Seoul back in mid-December. But he has been a force. I mean, he is big, he is strong, he is fast, he has good, certainly, character on the ice, character off the ice. And there's Dangeno racing to the front, Watsonabe second. Relief Dowdlin of Canada, who found his brother into the sports. And helmet 171, he's in this race. Etehan Atad of Turkey now in front. Don Koss, haven't seen much of him over this World Cup season from the Netherlands. He now bursts out from it. Angelo just biding his time. And Thomas of Poland was actually brought up in Canada and started representing Poland a couple of years ago. Thomas in helmet 69. And Peter Riches of Great Britain. You see him as kind of Lewis Stride and down goes Dan Koss of the Netherlands. So Koss then sprawling into the pads. And that will be reviewed. Watsonabe right now in front. Angelo. A close second, and now Dodelin goes down on his own. Face plants on the ice. And now these two have broken apart. Dangeno and Watanabe, 1-2. You can see how just carefully they're going down that back straight. I, you just kind of get the sense that these skaters maybe don't quite trust the ice with as much racing as we've seen over the last 45 minutes or so. We're going to make sure that they don't stumble into fall and lose a guaranteed advancing position to the semis.
So three more quarterfinals to go. And here we see costs going down. Here's the finish with Watanabe just moments behind Angelo. Taking a look at a possible penalty involving Peter Riches of Great Britain against Dan Koss. Nothing has been resolved as of yet. We're grateful to our referee liaison we have in Dresden, passing along some of the information of what they are potentially looking at. Nothing is ever official until that man says it is. It's Palos Kover, the chief referee on the ice. You know, take a look there at, at Koss. Did they did they clip blades or was that him just kind of going down on his own? Riches stabilized himself, didn't go down to his credit, but certainly broke stride. Let's we'll see if that is enough for a penalty to be assessed. So we'll Wait and see what the result is. We should be moments away from seeing it. Let's look at Stephen Goff, head coach of the United States team on the right of your screen. Paolo Adamski will be in this next quarter final representing Poland. That's what has those Polish fans on their feet. Penalty assessed against the skater from Great Britain. Peter Riches is awarded a penalty. And that will advance uh, Don Koss into the semifinals. So Dangeno, Watanabe, and Koss into the semifinals. We'll take a look at the ultimate determination here. Now, Riches is in the 70 helmet. Left side of your screen, right in there. Yeah, he did kind of clip. It looked like the, the back of the blade of Don Koss. That leads to the penalty assessed on the skater from Great Britain. And Don Koss moved via the penalty into the semifinals. Three more quarters to go. Friso Imans will lead this field onto the ice. Sebastian Lepep right there. 32-year-old, three-time Olympian. Two individual podiums over his career at the World Cup level. And one of them right here in Dresden five years ago now. So bronze in the thousand. His other individual podium was back in Toronto in 2015. But continues to grind out his career here on the ice. Le Pepin helmet 39. Eritek Gazgali of Kazakhstan. Adamski of Poland in 154. Walk from Hong Kong in helmet 113. Jonathan So of the United States in helmet 139. And Rafael Schlosserek from Germany in his first World Cup event of the year in helmet 180. And he is at the back of the pack on the right of your screen. Those are the seven in this quarterfinal. See Kim Gun Woo coming up in the next quarterfinal as Le Pep continues to lead the way. And a couple of skaters go down, and Rizzo Imans is now in front, and Le Pep was one of the skaters who just went down. And it looks like Jonathan sold the United States made.
results from quarterfinal heat number six, Iman Kazgali. So awarded the penalty, and that will advance Sebastian Lepep on to the semifinals. A couple more quarters remaining here before they will resurface the ice one more time ahead of the mixed relay quarterfinals. We'll take one more look at the penalty assessed against Jonathan So of the United States right there. And again, the position for Lepep, he was in second position qualifying slot at that early stage of the race so he is awarded a spot in the semifinals now we move on to the next to last quarter final for the men's 1500 kim gun woo will headline this one kim gun woo had been the crystal globe leader for the first couple of world cups he's had Pretty good credentials over the course of the year, but an ill-timed penalty cost him some serious points a few weeks ago, and now he finds himself fourth at 143 points now behind Stephen Dubois. And he's even 64 points behind D'Angelo for third. So he has work to do this weekend and next. Lemons, Propfer, and Helmut 112 representing Germany on Dresden ice. Nico Andermann of Austria, Felix Pigeon of Poland. Kalko from Ukraine, Anderson from Norway, and Zhang Tianyi, the 19 year old world junior bronze medalist a few years ago at the 1500 meter distance from China. That's the field. Quarterfinal number seven. So for Kim Gun Woo to really recover all the lost points over the last World Cup event, really he needs one result and one result only. That would be a pair of golds this weekend in the 1500, and then he's in the second running of the thousand. Is Dubois and Park Juan and Dandino. I mean, they've been so consistent getting to A finals that for now, somebody like Kim Gun Woo is as talented as he is back on the scene for Korea after he was off the team for a few years. It's going to take a, a, a massive finish when you're that far behind, and a couple of breaks will help as well. But it has to be almost win win, and then going to next week in. Gdansk could do the same thing and then head to the World Championships and take your chances with where you are then. But Kim Gun Woo right now in front inside the final four laps. Felix Pijon right now second. Zhang Chan Yi still hanging around third. Anderman about a meter behind him. But Kim Gun Woo, no challengers here in this quarterfinal. So as long as he finds clean ice. He's in great shape to move on, at least take the first step here in Dresden. There's the bell for Kim. Zhang seconds. And look how easy Kim comes to the line. Didn't want to take any chances of a misstep or a costly mistake. He knows how important it is right now. Zhang finishing second. And again, another Newcomer on the scene, at least this week in the senior circuit for Team China. Books and other spots in the next round. They've done very, very well today. So there's the very delicate finish for Kim Gun Woo. And one last quarter final before this ice gets a very well deserved resurfacing. There are the official results Kim and Zhang on their way to the semifinals. And they were talking when we opened up this men's 1500 quarters 
that a maximum of three thirds would potentially advance. We've had three different skaters now advance via penalty. So no third place finishers by time will move on. So now we get to the last quarter final. So it's first or second or bust. And a head back through the repechage. Niall Tracy. There's Jang Sun Woo, 21 year old from Korea. Andrew Hio of the United States. Tobias Wolf. Daniel Bergen of Ukraine. Kim Tai Sung of Korea. Those are the six. So this is the last quarter final, the men's 1500. And at the end of this race, they will resurface the ice. We'll come back then with four quarter finals of the mixed relay. And that'll be it for the morning session here in Dresden. And there's a look at Bergen. Sometimes you see this in 1500 meter races. Oftentimes, almost always, it never works. But Bergen sprinting ahead and trying to maybe lap the field if he can, wear them out, force them to chase, maybe hasten up the pace, but the odds that any skater is going to have the endurance to keep this up for 13 and a half laps are close to zero, but sometimes you take that shot because it might be the only shot you have to advance. So that's what Bergen is doing right here. And there is the rest of the pack. There's Niall Trace in the 41 help. But you don't see really anybody panicking to try and chase down Bergen. I think they just trust that Bergen will come back to them on his own. And let's see if we can get a wide shot and see how big the lead is here for Bergen at this stage. And you can see by the lap times, they're already picking up about a, a quarter to a half of a second on Bergen now with every lap. And you can see Bergen is uh, feeling the burn right now. But no real panic, and yeah, they're they're closing in. But oh, three skaters go out on a tie-up. That might help Bergen's chance, but Bergen, Bergen is done. He has nothing left in the gas tank, and that all of a sudden opens things up for Andrew Hill in the United States and Tobias Wolf, because Kim, Zhang, and Tracy all got tied up and went down just as they were about to pass Bergen. And so it's Andrew Hill. He's going to be gifted a spot in the semifinal along with Tobias Wolf. And Bergen is actually going to finish third in this race when he clearly would have finished last had there not been a three-car pileup. But the effort from Bergen, you like it? Right out of the... Off the start, there he goes. And he was in the lead solidly for about five laps. And then hit the wall. And speaking of hitting a wall, let's check out the collision. I believe it was in this corner right there. Yeah, Tracy and the two Koreans, Kim and Zhang, all got tied up. They will take a look at that because the, the battle right there is for second position. Even though Hio came through it in second position. So we'll take a look and you could theoretically see a potential advancement there. We'll wait and see what they decide here. So, I mean, this, this could be an infraction against Tracy of Great Britain. It could be something potentially involving one of the Korean skaters instead. That's what they're trying to sort out right now. And then at what position of the race are these races when it happens? Well, clearly second, third, fourth, all three of them battling for that for that two spots. And they're gonna take a look and see. We could very well have an advancement, but nothing official as of, yeah, they're still taking a look at various angles, making the determination. <laughs> that, that at least gave Bergen a bit of a reprieve. He was about to be passed, and because of that crash involving three skaters, Bergen stayed in the lead for about another half lap before Hio blew right past him on the drive-by. Fans tracking the action, tracking the penalties, tracking the advancements right there, keeping score.
And here are the results, and there is a penalty, and there is an advancement as a result of the penalty. Zhang Sun Wu of Korea is pushed into the semifinals. Now Tracy of Great Britain draws the penalty. Andrew Hugh and Tobias Wolf qualify anyway. Bergen finishes third, but he'll have to go through the repassage to try and get back into the main draw. We'll take a look at what the final determination was on the penalty charged against Niall Tracy. On him for the illegal late pass. And that sends Zhang Sun Wu from Korea into the semifinals. So the Zamboni is out, and they will resurface the ice, and we'll have a bit of a break, and then when we come back, the final, the final races of the morning session, we'll have four quarterfinals of the mixed relay. So that will come up in about 14 minutes time, so stay tuned for that. You're watching coverage of the International Skating Union's World Cup Dresden. Back in about 14 minutes with the quarters of the mixed relay.
And back to ISU's coverage of World Cup Dresden as we move now to the final event of our morning session here on day one. Quarterfinals, first of four of the mixed relay. This will feature Korea, the United States, Germany, and Kazakhstan. So a lot of fans will be on their feet for the German side. Eckstein, Hammermuller, Young, and Musk are the four out for Germany. And called to the start line and ready to go. Park Jiwon and Helmet 85 will lead things off for Korea. The United States will open things up with Corey Stoddard, Andrew Hill, Marcus Howard, Kristen Santos, Griswold are the four out there for the U.S. Khan, Nikisha, Zambusanova, and Zakzibayev for Kazakhstan. So here's the first exchange. Stoddard to Santos, Griswold for the United States. And on the ice is Lee for Korea, Lee Suyong. So Kazakhstan is already down, and it's the U.S. and Korea. Korea comes in the world number four. They've been on a couple of World Cup podiums so far this year, as have the Americans. A couple of bronzes for the United States in each of the last two World Cup events in Beijing and Seoul. Took silver as well, the four continents. So 18 laps in this 2,000 meter race. In the exchange now, to Andrew Rahio for the United States. Kim Gun Woo right on his tail for Korea. Kazakhstan is out there, but again, they've been lapped or a couple of laps down. So right now, this is just the United States and Korea as they battle for the top two. First and second move on to the semifinals. And actually, we'll see five teams coming up in the next quarterfinals. So you think it's busy on the ice as it is with four teams. We'll see five coming up in the second quarter. So 17 overall teams are qualifying through these quarters to try and get to the semis. So back in the second leg, Santos Griswold for the United States. And Lee out there for Korea. Four laps to go. So Santos Griswold's time on the ice is done in this quarterfinal. A little bit of contact right there with Marcus Howard. The United States still in front. We'll have one more exchange, and here it comes. And Korea, with the better exchange, keeps inside position. But again, first and second head of the semifinals anyway. And here's the bell. And racing forward into the final back straights. And it is going to be Korea bringing it in inside the, that last exchange. Good enough to give the lead to Kim Gun Woo and Korea. And Korea and the United States on to the semifinals. Kim Gun Woo, Korea and the United States get out to this quarterfinal safely. Let's take a look at the official results there. Germany finishing third, Kazakhstan fourth. And that is it for those two teams. No repechage at all in the mixed relays. And now we'll get ready for that five team quarterfinal. It's packed to begin with. Overpacked now, oversized. Netherlands, Belgium, Japan, Great Britain, and Norway are the five teams. And right now, the Dutch are the world number one. They've been on the World Cup podium in the mixed relay. Not the first event in Montreal, but everyone since. 
silver the second week in Montreal, and then gold the last two, Beijing and Seoul. And we'll, we were talking earlier when Suzanne Schulting took the ice for the first time in this World Cup season, about what, 45 minutes ago, what changes that will bring to the individual races. Now we'll get a look at what changes it will bring to all the relays for the Dutch. The female relay team, women's relay team, and the mix. She is scheduled to be on the ice as we get a look at Xander Velsbor of the Netherlands to open things up. Schulting on the start list as we do get things underway. And there's Velsbor racing out ahead. Hannah de Smet is out there for Belgium. Yeah, Great Britain, Norway, and Japan. And it's rare to see Great Britain and Norway out there with relay teams or even mixed relay teams, but they're out there now. We'll see how they fare. And there is Schulting in the orange number one helmet as part of this mixed relay. We saw Schulting advance through to the semifinals of the 1500 in her very first World Cup event of the year, just about an hour ago. And now on the ice, taking the first of her uh, two turns on the ice in this mixed relay. Stannis Metz and Degwitzer, the other two on the men's side for the Dutch. Belgium right now second, Great Britain third. That's Housman on the ice right now for the Dutch. Rizzo Imans makes the exchange over to him, and he's on the ice for the Dutch. Healthy lead for Netherlands. Belgium right now is second. There's a look at Imans. Japan currently third, and then Great Britain fourth, then to Norway. Now back to the leadoff legs. This is Velzebor for the Dutch. And she'll have this one last exchange to Suzanne Schulting. We'll get her last couple laps on the ice. It's the Dutch, it's Belgium. And Japan still sitting third. Again, first and second move on to the semifinals. And there is a look at Schulting back on the ice for the Dutch. What, what that will do for the depth of the Dutch relay teams, which are already at a very high caliber. Big tear for Belgium. No real chance to track down. There's the last exchange from Hausman to Emons. Stand to Smet on the ice for Belgium. There is the bell for Emons. Last quarter, and the Netherlands will easily win their quarterfinal. Belgium second, Japan third. So all the Dutch have done over their last four efforts in the mixed relay is win gold. Three over the World Cup, and then they took gold of the European Championships a couple of weeks ago. So they are rolling, and rolling now with Suzanne Schulting is part of their relay team. So the task just got a whole lot more daunting for the rest of the world against the Dutch mixed relay team. And there's a look at Schulting. Couple of more quarterfinals to go on the mixed relay. Well, not quite to the same degree, but we talked about this when the World Cup season began with what the addition of the Liu brothers would mean for uh, the Chinese men's relay team and the Chinese mixed. Adding Suzanne Schulting to the mix for the Dutch relay teams, the women's relay team and the mixed, uh, will have similar impact and the Dutch squad was exceptional even before time now for the third quarter final 
back to four squads. Italy, Poland, France, and Croatia. Italy, the world number three at this stage. Silver medalist in Beijing. Now they've been a podium three times in this World Cup season. A couple of bronzes and a silver in Seoul. Poland, meanwhile, they've kind of been the endearing relay teams, both mixed and on the men's and women's side. Haven't gotten a lot of love, haven't really had much success at all over the last, oh, several years, but this year reaching a finals and winning some medals. Took silver at the European Championships a couple of weeks ago. They're right now number seven in the world, so let's watch Team Poland as they sprint off quickly. And that's Mazur opening things up, Stormowska along with Selye and Nowinski, the expected quartet out there for Poland here in this quarterfinal. Ariana Siegel, Confortola, then it's Castanelli and Speckenhauser, the expected four for Italy. As Confortola right now is on the ice for Italy. France on the men's side with Navarro and Faircock, and it's Levesque and Daudet. And for Croatia, Kolink and Martinic, Asik, and Biric, that really never changes for Croatia. Those are effectively their only four skaters, two on the men's side, two on the women's side. So there's Farrakhok on the ice for France. Selye right now for Poland on the ice. Poland still in front. Castanelli and Italy in second. There's Nowinski. Against Speckenhauser. That should be the anchor matchup we see in this quarterfinal. Navarro out there for France, trying to stay within touching distance. Only the top two advance to the semis. And now back to the lead. And Mazur on the exchange got pushed over by her teammate. Slides into the wall. That's going to open things up now for France in the second position. Italy now in the lead. And we get a whistle, and are they going to halt the race? Oh, perhaps a dangerous position for, I'm guessing, Mazur on the ice. And it looks like with about seven laps or so left in this mixed relay, it's been called dead at Parable. And that would have been called by Balaj Culver in the... Chief referee on the ice. And so all the skaters head back to the pads. They'll check their blades. And we'll see if we get any replay before a restart on why. But I'm guessing what happened was on the exchange where we saw Team Poland go down. The exchange, I believe, was from Nowinski to Mazur. With Poland in the lead, Mazur went into the pads. And then another lap or two goes by, and then you heard the whistle. So I'm guessing one of the athletes from Poland was maybe still in the way. Here's the exchange, the stumble, the fall. But then the whistle did not come for another maybe lap and a half or two laps. So we'll see if perhaps there's one more third look at the exchange. But we evidently will not get a look at the reason for the stoppage. It almost certainly has to be for a, a dangerous area on the ice involving skaters. And, oh, and, and there it is. This is our first look at the reason for the stoppage. And yeah, that's the first time we got a look. And so I'm one of the Polish skaters is down and that very likely is, I don't want to speculate, but I'm pretty sure that is uh, Mazur on the front end of that exchange. And boy, they're out there with the medical team. And that's the reason for the stoppage. And boy, let's hope that that Polish skater, I believe again it is, uh, we'll try and get clarification, but I believe it is Mazur off of that exchange. Let's hope, let's hope that she is going to be okay.
we'll take one more look on the exchange. That's Nowinski on the exchange. And again, that is Mazur. And you see that, that left leg and even ankle. Watch the left leg and ankle right in there. And I think that's where the injury was. And oh, that is tough to watch right there. Oh, and you see Nowinski in the background put, immediately put his hands on top of his black helmet because he, he saw something terribly wrong right there. And then all of a sudden, Mazur helpless straight into the pads. And now up on the stretcher, and she'll be stretched off the ice. Goodness. applause of gratitude and hope from the fans here at the Joy Next Arena. Nicola Mazur stretchered off with what looked to be a left leg injury on that exchange. And let's pray that she is going to be okay. Those are the, the dangers, the rigors of short track. And yeah, you can imagine what's going through the minds of all these skaters. They've all been in similar situations off balance on their uh, on their blades legs ankles and then going at a really good pace helplessly in the pad sometimes head first shoulder first and it is a small small fraternity of athletes and this can be mentally difficult to recover and reset. And across teams, so many good friends wear other countries' colors. And that is going to be very challenging to process for a lot of these athletes. As difficult as it is, Balaj Kober blows the whistle and calls the remaining three teams back onto the ice and back to the start line. So it will now be Italy, France, and Croatia on the restart. These two teams are racing, or probably these three teams are racing for two spots in the semifinals. So it's Italy, France, and Croatia as we get things back underway. And Confortola in the 34 helmet out there for Italy. And again, this is a 18 lap race 
We got to within about the last six laps before the whistle blew the race dead with the injured Polish skater Nikola Mazur. And now these skaters are back out on the ice for 18 laps one more time. Italy and France, 1-2. Croatia, a distant third. That's Navarro on the ice for France. And Lucas Speckenhauser in the lead with Italy. And Speckenhauser about to make the exchange. Italy with the Oriati in the 44 helmet now on the ice. Levec sticking close. And again, no need really to do anything out of the ordinary at this stage with three teams on the ice for two spots and these two breaking away from Croatia. Croatia is basically a, a full straightaway behind. One more exchange remaining. Faircock will deliver the exchange to Navarro for France. Italy right now is second. And it'll be Navarro around that final first quarter with Speckenhauser on the chase. But again, this will all be moot as far as the results go. Each of those teams, France and Italy, finishing 1-2. They both will move on to the semifinals. Athletes off the ice, a little bit more gas than they normally would be, but certainly their hearts are a bit heavier after the injury suffered by Nicola Mazur a few moments ago that led to the restart. But France and Italy are in the semifinals as a result. So one more quarterfinal to go. There are the official results. You see the DNF with Poland with the injury to Mazur. Did not come back out for the restarts. And if we have any update on the injury to her over the course of the weekend officially, we'll certainly have our broadcast team pass that along. Final quarter final. Again, first and second on to the semis. And right now the world number two, China. Wang Yi will lead things off for China. They're the world number two. A couple of World Cup golds already this year. Brock. Onto the fourth. Canada, Crane, the others. Renee Steenge on the opening couple of laps here for Canada. And now the first exchange. China, Canada, Hungary, one, two, three. Still saying the Mets out there for a Hungary. Got a Metco for Ukraine. And Zhang for China. We'll make the first female to male exchange. Seen a lot of new faces for Team China so far in this opening days. 
Pierre Gillet is out there for Canada on the third leg, and we're likely going to see Stephen Dubois on the anchor here for Canada. And I'll tell you what, the, the newcomers, at least this weekend in Dresden so far for Team Canada, very, very productive. They all have basically advanced on out of the prelims, out of the heats, out of the quarters with the Lou brothers not here in Dresden this weekend. China, Canada, 1-2. But tight, everybody with a shot. Ukraine third, Hungary fourth. And the lead to Steams in Canada. Takes the lead away from Wang Yi. And now the exchange to Ganyon and China with room on the inside makes the pass and China back on top. Little bit of an opening now between Canada back to Hungary in third position. And now inside the final four laps. Pierre Gillet trying to track down China. One last exchange. Pierre Gillet to Dubois. Canada still second. And China trying to bring it home. Here's the bell. Dubois looking for a little bit of space. Decides not to take the chance. Canada's through anyway. China wins it. Canada second. And each of those two teams will move through to the mixed relay semifinals tomorrow. Hungary third, Ukraine fourth. So the mixed relay semifinals are now set. And that will wrap up this morning session of day one here in Dresden. Bit of a somber finish though with the injury suffered appear to be a left leg injury to Nikola Mazur of Poland with about seven laps or so to go in their quarterfinal and they were in the lead trying to book a spot in the mixed relay semifinals but the injury stretchered her off again no update on that injury if we do get word of uh, an update on her on her condition we'll certainly have our broadcast crew over the course of the weekend pass that along. There are the official results from the last quarter final of the mixed relay. Canada and China also through to the semifinals. So that will take us to the midday break on day one here in Dresden. And when we come back on our coverage, more from day one here in Dresden. And that will be the initially right out of the gates, the prelims of the men's 500 meter the heats of the women's 500 and men to follow. And then we'll have the, uh, the heats of the second running of the 1,000 meter, and we'll wrap up the day with the quarterfinals in both the women's and men's 3,000 and 5,000 meter relay. So for now, as they open up the pads, they will do a full resurfacing of the ice, and we will resume in, what is that, about an hour and a half's time? A little, a little less than an hour. A little less than an hour will resume with the 500 men's prelims and the rest of day one. So for our entire crew, Patrick Kinas saying thank you for watching. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ISU World Cup Dresden. Thanks for watching. Stick around.
Welcome one and all to Dresden's Joy Next Arena and a packed session of preliminary and heat and quarter-final action across several disciplines in this Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. We're going to get underway with the men's 500 metres preliminaries, then move to the women's 500 metres heats, the men's 500 metres heats, the women's and men's 1,000 metres heats, and then we'll bring you some quarter-finals in the women's 3,000 metre relay and the men's 5,000 metre relay. All of that to come over the next several hours of action from the great short track speed skating city of Dresden in Germany. It's a real pleasure to have your company. Thank you so much for being part of this busy, busy weekend of World Cup competition. As the calculators are out, the points are being worked out and we are closer to discovering who is going to be the World Cup champion. But first, the order of business for all of these athletes is getting through to the heats. Preliminary heat number one for the men in the 500 metres. We have Quentin Furcock, Winter Youth Olympic Games mixed team relay champion and a silver medalist in this event from the World Championships. In 2022, Andrew Ho of the United States of America. 22 from Pennsylvania, an Olympian and a bronze medalist in this event at the Four Continents earlier in the season. There is Quentin Furcock, 18th in the Crystal Globe rankings and the silver medalist from the 2022 World Championships. Zhang Tianyi, 19 of the People's Republic of China. We also have Dresden's own Robin Bendig, wearing 77. And the 18-year-old from Sofia, the youngest in this race, Ivan Donchev of Bulgaria. It's Kontan Furkok on the inside, trying to take control of this 500 metres early on. He's done that very nicely with Andrew Ho of the USA in second position. The top two will go through with a maximum 11 fastest third place finishers. Donchev is the one who's in third at the moment, but quite a way behind Furkov and Ho. They're looking nice and comfortable so far. Andrew Ho doesn't need to do anything uh, in terms of over committing here because uh, Quentin Furkov and he are far ahead as we hit the bell for the very last lap. Zhang Tianyi, the teenager, has moved now into third position. Donchev dropping back into fourth, and uh, it's going to be on the line uh, Kontan Furkok and Andrew Ho that secure their place in the uh, heats. Zhang Tianyi will be waiting to see if that's good enough. Let's have a look back at this. Good beginning, smooth from uh, Kontan Furkok and Andrew Ho, the uh, youngster tucking him behind him. But no great surprise to see a gentleman who's been on a world championship podium in this event, taking control of the first preliminary race. A little glance behind him at Andrew Ho to check that all was well. A good effort from young Robin Bendig of Dresden, the graduate of political science from the Dresden University of Technology. Proud moment for him to participate in this World Cup. So, Quentin Furcock and Andrew Ho of France and the USA respectively go through. Zhang Tianyi will wait to see if that time is good enough. We'll bring you all of the uh, confirmed qualifiers for the uh, heat stage at the conclusion of these 12 preliminary races. Heat number two in the preliminary round for the men's 500 metres. Gianni Sillier of Poland. 22-year-old, uh, born in France, but based in uh, the lovely city of Gdansk, has been a World Cup champion in the 500 metres, won uh, a gold medal in Almaty last year. We also have Danilo Fedorenko of Ukraine, 21-year-old, going in search of his first international honours. Mark Gizmadia, just 18, from Hungary. A World Cup debut for him, his... Uh, Mother is a, a very accomplished coach. His grandfather, Ferenc, has a competition named after him in Debrecen. So comes from a wonderful family in this sport. We have Yi Jongmin of the Republic of Korea. As we have a look at Danilo Fedorenko. And Zhang Xinjie of the People's Republic of China. Exciting youngster. Keep an eye on number 176. The... 16-year-old who's uh, just won 
the 1,000 metres title at the Winter Youth Olympic Games in Gangwon and uh, a mixed relay gold medal there as well. And there he is. One for the future, no question. Zhang Xinjie. So just to remind you, the top two automatically qualify. A maximum of 11 fastest third place finishers will advance to the heats. Packed field of almost 200 athletes coming to this World Cup in Dresden. And he's been a strong performer. Can he take control of this one? This is the second preliminary race and early on as expected on the inside, it is the gentleman from Poland, Diany Sillier, who is ahead of uh, Yi Jong-min, the 25-year-old Four Continents relay champion from Korea Republic. Now, Fedorenko is making uh, a move to try to get into that front too, but at the moment, Sillier and Yi are pretty comfortably out in front. You can see the uh, work rate for Fedorenko as he tries to catch up and to get into uh, contention for a place in the heats. Jang and Gismari at the moment are being raced out of this. It's far and away. Celier and E with the E taking it ahead of Diane Celier. So E Jong Min, who won the 1500 metres title at the Dresden World Cup in 2019, going in search of his seventh World Cup gold medal. The two of them look very composed, didn't they? Never really any doubt and uh, maybe a little stamp of authority from E as he took this win. Could have happily drifted across the line in second place. Yi Jongmin and Diony Sillier of Korea Republic and Poland going through. Zhang Xinjie is the one who's now waiting to see if it's good enough. This is the third preliminary race for the men's 500 metres at the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. Yoshinaga Kazuki wearing number 28. will be the one expected to take early control of this. We'll keep an eye, though, on some of the youngsters in here. Right. Oh, very good beginning from Masaid uh, Zhaksibayev of Kazakhstan. That was a super start, very aggressive attack of the race with Yoshinaga in second place and the 17-year-old Asen Gurov of Bulgaria in third position. Top two guaranteed to advance. And there's already a little bit of daylight now between those uh, front two, but Zhaksibayev really did attack early on, and it's now a question of whether he can defend. If Yoshinaga fancies taking the victory here. Gurov, one of two teenagers in this race, is in third position, and on the line, Zhaksibayev and Yoshinaga looking very comfortable. Gurov with 41.85 seconds, finishing third. Lucas Wareham of Australia, 21-year-old, finishing in fourth position ahead of uh, Toprak Erolyu, another 17-year-old from Turkey. Great beginning from uh, Masai Dajakshibayev of uh, Kazakhstan. And he and Yoshinaga, most uh, assured. Twenty-seven, Zhaksibayev, the oldest uh, in that heat. Three years older than Yoshinaga, who did win a bronze medal in the 500 metres at last year's Dresden World Cup. 
He has been a champion over longer distances. Masaya Jakshibayev and Yoshinaga Kazuki, the two who've qualified automatically. Asen Gurov, the 17-year-old from beautiful Sofia in Bulgaria, watching and waiting now. The fourth preliminary race for the men in the 500 metres. Pietro Sigel of Italy, two-time Olympic Winter Games medalist from Beijing and the reigning 500 metres world champion will be uh, the expected one to watch, but it's a, a good field this. We've got Sebastian Lepin. So, Sigel with a wonderful start, and unfortunately we've lost uh, Yokoyama Hiroki from Japan, I believe. So, Sigel ahead of Howard Lepap in third position. Howard now has gone into the lead over Pietro Sigel. And this is very tight, as you'd imagine, between Howard Siegel and Lepap. Three very strong competitors, one of whom is going to miss out on an automatic qualification spot. But if they can all stay close together, then they'll be looking good value, the third place finisher, for a place in the heat. So it is Siegel, it is Howard, maybe just on the line, an attempt from Lepap, but he was raced into third position. And it is Stefan Alexander Kurmudiev. Another teenager from Sofia in Bulgaria who finishes in fourth position. Unfortunate beginning for Yokoyama Hiroki, who turns 30 in just over a week. And the economics graduate from Kwansei Gakuin will know that the numbers will not be adding up for him in this particular race. Attention will turn to later competitions here in Dresden as we look back at the three who are well positioned because the pat was right up with Siegel and Howard. So the reigning world and European champion. No real issues for him early on in this competition in Dresden. Pietro Siegel and Marcus Howard advancing automatically. Sebastian Lepap with a good time for a place in the heats proper. This is heat number five in the men's 500 metres preliminaries. So Yura of the Republic of Korea. Olympic Winter Games medalist in Pyeongchang at his home games in 2018 and uh, a medalist at the World Championships on more than one occasion. He's stood in the centre of the podium. Soyira was second in Seoul at the World Cup earlier in the season. We have a youngster in Brandon, Yankai Park of Singapore, who's been making great progress of late. Lukas Kobusch of Germany, 19, has never competed at the Senior World Championships and makes a World Cup debut here. We also have Daniel Tibors of Hungary wearing 74, and Croatia's Martin Collins wears 103, and he's a fascinating individual. Aggressive beginning, very aggressive beginning from uh, a couple of them. And uh, leading the way, it is uh, Soyi Ra. But a good start from uh, Martin Collins, the master's graduate in kinesiology from Zagreb University. Daniel Tibors is in third position, but he really has gone out after this, has Martin Collins. The uh, German uh, Lukas Kobuch is in uh, fourth position. As now Martin Collins just eases away from Soyira. And he progresses well into the heats. So finishing in second place and Daniel Tibors in third position. Really good beginning from Martin Collins. 
got off to a super start. Just tucked in neatly behind Soyira and then went for it. Benefited, didn't he, from that little slip from So. His place secure, the gentleman who is uh, a highly accomplished uh, guitarist. Well, music to his ears when he looks up at the leaderboard and sees just how good that was. Martin Collins ahead of Soyira with Daniel Tibors of Hungary waiting to see if that's going to be a good enough time. Still seven races to come in the men's preliminaries. This is heat number six in the preliminary round. And we have Kai Hausmann of the Netherlands wearing 38. Twice a European champion in relay competition. Thomas Nadalini of Italy wears number 50. A mixed relay gold medalist in Dresden last year for a real career highlight for the 21-year-old. Yang Chengri of Hong Kong, China, 21 World Cup debutant. Where's 115? Kai Hausman will now defend uh, first position with Thomas Nadalini in second place. Good beginning from uh, Kai Hausman, the 26-year-old Dutch skater. Nadalini comfortably in second place. Uh, quite a gap with uh, Leon Tenko, the teenager from Ukraine in third position at the moment, but that might... Uh, change because it's looking rather tight for third. Ausman and Nadalini now changing positions as Nadalini moves round into the lead as these two gentlemen hit the bell and start to think of a place in the second round of the competition, the heat stage. It will be Nadalini over Hausman, but it's not really of any great consequence. Third place, well raced there from World Cup debutant Yang Chengri of Hong Kong, China. And the youngster Erik Andersen, 17 from Norway, completing the pack. Thomas Nadalini and uh, Kai Hausman advancing to the heat stage proper with Yang Chengri. A slightly slow third place time, it must be said, so I might find it difficult to stay uh, priced in the market there. Heat number seven of the men's 500 metres preliminaries. Kazakhstan's Denis Nikisha wearing helmet number 11, 28 year old. Four times a medalist at the World University Games, including in the 500 metres. And he won a bronze medal at the Seoul World Cup earlier this season. We have the Austrian wearing number 60, Nico Andermann of Vienna. Wearing 171 is Philippe Dodela of Canada. He's been a relay medalist at the Four Continents. An undergraduate in social and behavioural science. Number 60 is Nico Andermann. Very fine skier as well as a short track speed skater. And you just saw there Ivan Martinic of Croatia, another kinesiology graduate from Zagreb University. And completing the field is 71 Oleg Hande of Ukraine. He is at 24. Nikisha taking control on the inside with a good beginning from Oleg Hande. The uh, Ukrainian starting authoritatively now it's just a question of whether he can keep that uh, positive line as uh, Philippe Dordelin is going to pressurize him from third position Dordelin has had a slightly uh, slow start but is now looking a little better Nikisha and Hande very very tight for first and second Dordelin ahead of Andaman and the bell reached and these two are very secure, Nikisha and uh, Hande. 
And it's Nikisha ahead of Hande Dodala in... Well, actually, it was uh, Andaman in the end who uh, took third place, uh, Nico Andaman. So we'll just look back at this one again. Did very well, the 24-year-old Oleg Hande, who was 10th in the 500 metres at the World Championships in 2022. And there were some issues for Philippe Dodala, meaning that uh, Nico Andaman was able to uh, secure third place. Whether it's enough for advancement to the heats will be confirmed after the 12th and final preliminary is done and dusted. So Dodala drifting out of third place, finishing well back in the end. Nikisha and Hande through to the heats. Could be a very interesting heat, this one. Preliminary round, race number eight for the men in the 500 metres in Dresden. Stein de Smet of Belgium wearing number 12. Bronze medalist in the 500 metres at the World Championships in 2022. The reigning European champion in 1,000. We have uh, Li Kun of the People's Republic of China, 19. Relay medalist, but also a junior world championship bronze medalist in the 500. There is uh, Kyle Ross Waddle of Great Britain, second time at the uh, Dresden World Cup, and Benson Ograde of Hungary, along with Murat Tagtadzi. Just the two fastest go through. Big beginning from Stein de Smet and Lee Kun. The Turk Murat Taktatsi is in third position with Kyle Ross Waddell trying to get close to him. That was almost uncomfortable. It's uh, Desmet ahead of Lee Kun. We've got three really going for this at the moment. Taktatsi is the other, and they're pulling away from the other two. So we have, as things stand, our front three. What's the order going to be? Will uh, Taktatsi manage to get round on this final bend? He's going to be uh, held off in the end, but he's done very well. That's a good time from the third place finisher, Murat Taktatsi. Stein Desmet and Lee Kun are the automatic qualifiers. But didn't he do a great job here, the young competitor from Turkey? Made his senior European Championship debut this season, part of the men's team that was sixth in the relay. He was ninth in the 500 metres. So he's uh, a young gentleman on the up. His confidence evidently has grown, and he raced that well. If you can get close to that gentleman, you're doing OK. Stein de Smet and Lee Kun of Belgium and the People's Republic of China are the automatic qualifiers. A good, fast display from Murat Tatachi of Turkey, though. Heat number nine in the men's 500 metres preliminary stage. Kim Tae-sung of the Republic of Korea wears number five. A winner at World Cup level at 500 metres in Almaty, Kazakhstan, last season. Three times a world junior champion, including in this the shortest distance. What will we see from Łukasz Kuszynski of Poland? One of the team that was the first to win a European Championship medal for Poland in men's competition. We also have Enzo Prust, Theo Collins, and Linus Riznes. Very, very interesting start that. He did very well, Kim Tae-sung, to hold off Łukasz Kuczynski, and now he's moved away quite smoothly. Łukasz Kuczynski is in second position. Proust, the Belgian, not a million miles away from him, with Collins uh, from Guildford 
in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland in fourth place. But Kim Tae-sung is controlling this. One of the most authoritative displays we've had so far from a single skater. He's quite far ahead of Łukasz Kuczynski and he wins that one. Kuczynski is second and uh, Collins just sneaks ahead impressively there on the line. Enzo Proust finishing full, so Theo Collins has kept alive his hope of a place in the heats. But this was Kim Tae-sung's exhibition display. 22-year-old from the great skating city of Seoul. The world junior champion over this distance. Impressing Kim Tae-sung ahead of Łukasz Kuczynski and uh, Theo Collins, the undergraduate in uh, physics at the University of Nottingham, but from Guildford in Surrey, performing extremely well right on the line to sneak ahead of Enzo Proust. Heat number 10. Preliminaries for the men in the 500 metres competition in Dresden. Felix Roussel of Canada wears 24. Four times a World Cup gold medalist, all in relay competition. But he did win a silver medal in this event in Montreal at the start of the World Cup calendar for 2023-2024. 14th in the Crystal Globe rankings. Radek Fikus of Czech Republic wears 61. Vare van Dam of Belgium, 75. Number 130 is Lucas McDonald of New Zealand. And 183 is the Netherlands' Hugo Bosma. <laughs> Felix Roussel, brilliant beginning on the inside. That was a treat of a start. Fantastic from him. Uh, McDonald just seemed to have a bit of difficulty shortly after that and as a result he's uh, now drifted back behind Bosmer into fourth position but uh, Roussel is looking silky smooth with Radek Fikus the 22 year old who injured himself at the World Cup in Dresden last year in second now the question is whether he can hold that because Bosmer has come round and now moves into second place so Roussel to take it and then Bosma, second, Ficus, third with a decent time. Rane van Damme in fourth and uh, Lucas McDonald, fifth place. Lovely to watch this start from uh, Felix Roussel. Such good reaction time. A man from Quebec, one of the greatest winter sports uh, regions of the world. Felix Roussel and Hugo Bosma have advanced. Radek Fikus now waits for the final two races to be completed. The penultimate preliminary race for the men in 500 metres action at the ISU World Cup of short track speed skating in Dresden. And we have uh, Teun Boer of the Netherlands wearing number 34 double relay gold medalist at the European Championships this year in Gdansk. 59 is Michał Nowinski of Poland, the first pole to win World Junior Championship gold. Did it in Dresden, in this place, last year. 87 is Joshua Carr of New Zealand, the 23-year-old uh, mechatronic engineering undergraduate. Kwok Tse Fung wears 113 from Hong Kong, China. And 17-year-old Tinius Rambol Alme 
of Norway was 165. The start is a good one from Nevinsky with Tuan Bohr behind him. So Michal Nevinsky moves into a decent early lead with the Dutch skater, the only one who's reasonably troubling him at the moment. Joshua Carr of New Zealand is quite some way back in third position, needs to get as close to these two as he possibly can to enhance his credentials for a place in the heats. But uh, Nevinsky drifting uh, back into second place with Tuan Bohr now moving comfortably into a position to take this one. So it's Bohr ahead of Nevinsky with Carr finishing third, a little slower than uh, those better qualification times though from uh, Joshua Carr. Interesting race. Owen Bohr of the Netherlands winning this one. 40.743 seconds. Just about a tenth plus ahead of Michal Niewinski of Poland with Joshua Carr in third place. 42.229 seconds. And we have had uh, some third place finishes that have been a lot quicker than that. And now to Heat. Number 12 in the men's 500 metres preliminaries. This is the last of the preliminary races. Jordan Pierre Gilles of Canada. 500 metres silver medalist at the Four Continents Championships. And he has been superb in World Cup competition, leading the way at 500 metres this season. He won Montreal and also Beijing twice. Miata Shogo wears 21 and turned 21 last month. Daniel Voon of the USA, 67. 92 is Tobias Wolf of Austria, 151. Glebivchenko of Kazakhstan. All eyes will go on Jordan Pierre Gilles of Canada, who's been in such sparkling World Cup form. He's having a wonderful season. This uh, excellent, experienced uh, skater, Gleb Ivchenko, three years younger than him at 22, is in second place. So that has changed now with uh, Miata Shogo moving right up there. The youth Olympic Winter Games gold medalist. But Ivchenko now drifting back as uh, Daniel Yoon of the United States of America slots into third place. And... Uh, it is Jordan Pierre Gilles with no great threat coming from Miata, whose time is very good as well. Daniel Yun finishing in third place, and Ivchenko with a good fourth place time compared to some of the third place times we've seen. But it is only the 11 fastest third place athletes that will progress. So the preliminary stage for the men comes to an end. And we bring you confirmation of that win for Jordan Pierre Gilles of Canada ahead of Miata Shogo and Daniel Yoon of the USA qualifying in third place for the heat stage. And that will come up in a little while in this first part of our session that is devoted to 500 metres racing. The shortest distance in ISU World Cup short track speed skating.
is Jean and Pierre Gilles on course for yet another World Cup title in this tremendous season that he's having. The Joy Next Arena in Dresden hosting this event. It's a familiar setting for short track speed skating competition. And almost 200 athletes have entered the competition. And we are going to return to bring you the women's 500 meters heats in just about 20 minutes or so. So don't go too far away. More action to come from Dresden.
Der Gelände war schon vergetreten, auch mit dem Problem, ein Laufwagen geht, nicht um den Weg zu kommen, der war nicht mehr in die Kunde, der war nicht mehr in die Kunde, der war nicht mehr in die Kunde.
Welcome to the setting of the Joy Next Arena in Dresden and the 500 metres for women. This is the heat stage of the competition. We look at Selma Paltzma of the Netherlands, very well positioned in the Crystal Globe rankings. The European champion in Gdansk. She's second in the 500 metres World Cup standings. Is Selma Paltzma, who has started most strongly, really overwhelmingly. That's a brilliant beginning from her ahead of Ariana Valcepina of Italy. And Khan of Kazakhstan is in third place, but Paltzma well ahead of Valcepina. Liu Wan Yu of the People's Republic of China in fourth position, but Paltzma is looking out and out as though she's going to uh, progress. Almost a lap of honour here into the uh, quarter-final stage of the competition. So Selma Poutsma ahead of Valcepina with Khan in third position. Poutsma, Valcepina, and actually right on the line. Liu Wan Yu, the 18-year-old from the People's Republic of China, finishing in third place. Top two qualifiers plus the max fastest third place finishes. Only two of them, the two maximum go through to the quarter final stage. No issues whatsoever for Selma Paltzma. As expected. Selma Paltzma and Ariana Valcepina progressing. The 29-year-old Italian joining Paltzma in the quarterfinal stage. Liu Wan Yu. Setting the first time for all of the athletes looking to get in as one of those two third place qualifiers. So we'll see who can better that. In the second heat, Wang Yi of the People's Republic of China, joined by Sinya Adamenko of Ukraine, Aurelie Levec of France, Kurokawa Ki of Japan, and Svea Rota of Germany. What an occasion it is for Svea Rota. Just a second World Cup after Dresden last year and she has seen everyone else fly to the front. Wang Ye is the leader at the moment. The 18-year-old from Beijing who's fourth overall in the 500-metre standings. Levesque is in second position with uh, Kurokawa third. But uh, Wang Ye, the uh, very promising teenager who's been picking up her first individual World Cup honours this season, is hitting the bell far ahead of uh, Aurelie Levesque, the uh, French athlete. And uh, the 22-year-old from Grenoble is going to cross the line second behind Wang Ye. Kurokawa in third position. 23-year-old from Japan who competes for the Yokohama Tire Japan Club. But so much attention this season on the youngster Wang Ye who has just looked excellent.
Wong Ye and Aurélie Levesque advancing automatically to the quarter-final stage of the competition. Kurokawaki waits to see if that will be one of just two third-place finishers to advance. We have eight races in total. This is race number three for the women in the 500 metres. Iso Yon, Gabriela Topolska, Malika Yermak and Betty Murska. Another young uh, German athlete. E Soyon of the uh, Republic of Korea, 30, very, very experienced. Fifth in the 1,000 metres overall in World Cup standings this season. Yet to get on a 500 metres podium. E Soyon begins well with Gabriela Topolska pressurising those two move away uh, Malika Yemek of Kazakhstan in third position Iso Yon who won a 1000 meters title on her World Cup debut in Calgary in 2012 she's accumulated so much international experience over a decade in World Cup competition to Polska Eight years younger, but three times a World Cup medalist in relay competition is staying tight, close to Isoyon. And those two, unless something dramatic happens right at the end here, are going to progress. It was actually possibly Topolska who took it on the line ahead of Isoyon, but they were really just uh, in a race of their own with Yermak in third position. And E certainly seemed to take the foot off the accelerator. Good finish from the pole. To Polska. Part of the team that won the silver medal in the mixed relay competition in Gdansk at her home European Championships earlier this season. And she is just ahead by fractions, fractions, fractions. That's all ahead of Iso Yon. Malika Yermak in third place. Betty Murska, the 20-year-old, competing at her second Dresden World Cup. Now to this fourth heat of the women's 500 metres, Michelle Velzebor, wearing number 16, joined by Julie Letai, Elisaveta Sidorko, Katrina Buritz, and Guro Samdal Melus of Norway. 17-year-old Samdal Melhus making a World Cup debut. This is the fourth heat for the women. Michelle Velzebor is off to an imposing start ahead of Julie Letai with Sidorko of Ukraine in third position. And they've opened up quite a gap with Buric ahead of Melhus for fourth and fifth. Velzebor and Letai, with Velzebor looking like she's just starting to pull away. Now, Letai's got the problems over her shoulder in Sidorko. This is where it could get very interesting towards the conclusion because the greatest issue here for Letai is whether Sidorko is going to be able to make that move around. She may just have run out of time in which to do it, and indeed she has. So, Velzebor with Letai taking second she did very well the American just to hold off any advance from Sidorko the 20 year old Michelle Velzebor from Herrenveen a world and European champion in relay competition and finishing ahead of the American Julie Letai Letai has also won a couple of relay medals this season.
Michel Velzebor and Julie Letai are advancing to the quarterfinals. Elisabetta Sidorko with a, a decent third place time. Heat number five, the women's 500 metres, Kim Boutin of Canada, joined by So Hui Min of the Republic of Korea, Valentina Ashchich of Croatia and Miroslava Siljukova of Ukraine. Kim Boutin, four-time medalist at the Olympic Winter Games. So Hui Min as well in this race it could be very very interesting so has been excellent in the 1000 meters this season uh, Bhutan with an explosive beginning very good start that from the uh, Canadian pulling ahead of so right from the word go as uh, Ashchich is doing very very well to hold firm with these uh, two at the start Ashchich the first Croatian short track speed skater to compete at the Olympic Winter Games and she's right up there pushing for second place if either of these two gives her a gap to attack it's got to be now for Ashchich if she is going to do it otherwise she'll have to hope this time is going to be sufficient it's a good display from Ashchich and uh, on the line Boutin is ahead of so with uh, Ashchich close to the pair of them Seljukova so finishing in fourth. Kim Boutin, who's won three gold medals in Dresden in World Cup competition over the course of her career. The first was a relay gold in 2015. She won the 1500 metres in 2017 too. Great to see her back in World Cup competition. After that uh, break that she chose uh, very wisely to take. Kim Buta and So Hui Min are the top two. Valentina Ashchich though with a, a pretty competitive time posted. But only two places for third place finishers in the quarterfinal stage. Chiara Betti of Italy with Rene Sting of Canada. Lam Qingyan of Hong Kong, China, and Debabla Samoki of Hungary. So the uh, beginning is a good one from Young uh, Chiara Betti of oh, Italy, except it is actually the first false start that we've had so far today. So back they go. Problems for Lam Qingyan of Hong Kong, China. So back these races go. She's very young, is Lam. 18 next month. She's come through the Hong Kong Sports Institute. Made her senior world uh, championship debut last season. And has competed at the World Junior Championships, including in Dresden last year.
a restart in heat number six. It is Chiara Betty again. We're going to have a restart. Well, we've had nothing to report at all so far. And now two restarts in one race. And that's why. Well, if you're just joining all of the uh, action at the Join Next Arena and the Dresden World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. We are in heat number six of eight in the women's 500 metres. And it's a complicated heat. So we have uh, confirmation of the departure of Lam Qingyan. No uh, great surprise having watched the replay of that. So just three now will begin. You have to feel, don't you, for the youngster from Hong Kong, China. Kiara Betty under some pressure from the Canadian, Rene Marie Sting. This is very, very interesting. Samogi is an afterthought at the moment. Can she capitalise on the two of them? Focusing so heavily on each other. She'll need a little bit of help from one of them if that is to be the case. Betty still holding off the 25-year-old from Etobicoke in Ontario. And they reach the bell now. Now is Steen going to attempt to overtake now she's perfectly happy to take second place and progress without incident so betty the young italian winning this one and samogi 45.21 not a fast third place time by comparison to what we've seen so far from others there in the end third time lucky and uh, Chiara Betty ahead of Renee Marie Stinger with Barbara Samogi in third place Now we have confirmation of that uh, penalty that uh, saw the young athlete from Hong Kong, China, disqualified. And once again, you have to really feel sorry for her. She's only 17, Lam Qingyan. Heat number seven, four in this one. Camilla Stormowska of Poland, Park Gion of the Republic of Korea. Esther Todd of Hungary and Kanairika of Japan. A good beginning by Stormovska. Races into an early lead. The 23-year-old who competed at the Olympic Winter Games in Beijing and won a silver medal with the relay team in our home European Championships in Gdansk. 
She's ahead of Park Gion early on. The question is how much of a move Park Gion chooses to make. That's it. Now, it is the athlete from the Republic of Korea who goes into the lead. Turned 26 last month, Park Gion. Winner of four World Cup medals. She goes through with Stormovska. sense there that Park was very much uh, controlling herself, not over committing at this stage, the heat stage of the World Cup. Heat number seven ends in a win for Park Gion. Camilla Stormovska in second place. Esther Todd will not advance, courtesy of that time. Not fast enough to be at one of the best two. And this is the last heat. We have Cassandra Velzebor of the Netherlands, Sofia Konya of Hungary. Tinika Dendulk of Belgium, Song Jiaori of the People's Republic of China, and Annabel Green of Great Britain. As we look at Tevelzebor, who's the leader in the 500 metres in World Cup competition and third overall in World Cup standings. Sandra Velzebor, the leader in the 500 metres in World Cup competition this season, and she's leading early on very, very well ahead of Zofia Konya of Hungary. Song Jiaori is in third position, then it's Dendulk, then Green. But pulling away most impressively is Velzebor in her own race at the moment. Konya and Song, that's going to be a very interesting quest for second as uh, we look at Velzebor cruising away, but these two are going to make it rather fascinating. Song is just at 18, and she's now trying to make that move past. Konya holds her off. Belzebul through, and on the line. It's quite comfortable in the end for Konya. Song Jiaori in third position. There was just a moment when the 18-year-old looked as though she was going to push through and finish second. She won the bronze medal in the 500 metres at the Junior World Championships in Dresden last year. So she's certainly one to watch in the future, but the experience of 28-year-old Zofia Konya showing through as she managed a difficult situation. Now, the question is whether she was entirely entirely within the uh, law of the land because it is being reviewed. So was there an infraction committed? Let's have a look at it. This is where Song tries to make the pass has Konya gone too far? Anxious wait for the fans here. Those supporting the athlete who won a bronze medal with the mixed relay team at the Olympic Winter Games in Beijing. It's Getting a lot of scrutiny from the officials, this one. And it is Velzebor and Konya confirmed as going through. So no overrule of the uh, final standing. Song Jiaori in third place, and it isn't sufficient.
for a spot in the quarter final stage. All of that brings to a close the uh, heats for the uh, women. No penalty, shared responsibility, the decision. So she was okay there, Jofia Konya. And there was just a nervous moment, though, for the uh, Hungarian delegation watching on. Now we go to the men's 500 metres, heat number one. Dennis Nikisha of Kazakhstan, wearing number 11, looked very good in the first round, the preliminary stage. Nikisha, knowing that he's going to... Oh, that's, that's got to be, yeah, no doubt about it. It's got to be recalled. Well, I was about to say, uh, Nikisha knows he's going to come under some pressure. Oleg Hande was really going for it on the start, but uh, it all ended up being rather messy, so back they go. It was Zhang Tianyi, the uh, Chinese skater who went hurtling to ground. So restart uh, impending as we have a look at uh, the uh, Ukrainian, Oleg Hande, 24-year-old, who was a strong performer at World Championship level in Montreal. Theo Collins of Great Britain. Men's 500 metres, heat one. It's going to be restarted. Here we go. Nikisha starts really well. Hande is close to him, but Nikisha's power has seen him take an early lead. Niewinski of Poland in third position. Three, fastest third place can go through a maximum of three, but it's the first two who will be secure. Oh, and that's unfortunate, Nivinsky's gone. And it's become a very messy race, actually, two down. That might be looked at again. But for Nikisha and Hande, it makes things very comfortable for them. Nikisha and uh, Hande going through with Zhang in third position. But uh, Michal Nivinsky was in the chasing pack when he lost his footing. That might warrant uh, further scrutiny. Let's have a look back at the race at large.
the confirmation of Denis Nikisha and Oleg Hande's advancement to the quarter-final stage. Chang Chanyi waits. And on we go with the men's 500 metres heats. And we have here uh, Petro Sigel, Stein de Schmidt, Kai Hausman, uh, Murat Taktachi, and uh, Zhang Shinje. Petro Sigel, sixth in the Crystal Globe rankings. And the reigning champion of the world and of his own continent in this discipline. It's going to be very, very interesting. This is a compact and high stakes heat. Some very fine athletes here. Kai Hausman has got a real job on his hands to try to get into that front too. And it's very exciting watching the youngster from China, Zhang Xinjie, start to emerge as a prospect for the future you can just imagine how he's feeling after those two gold medals at the olympic winter games and there is murat tatachi 21 year old from turkey a nation that has seen its profile increase in recent years in this sport should be good fun this one Uh, recall clearly yes it's absolutely no doubt about it is there what Tagtachi was quite some way ahead of the start he's frustrated about it obviously Regrettably, he has to uh, depart. The thing is, in a race like this, when you've got these competitors and only two places are available in the quarter-final stage, you can see why somebody would over-egg it at the beginning. You cannot waste a fraction of a second in a race like this. So here we go, they're away this time with Stein de Smet ahead of Pietro Siegel. Kai Hausman in third position, the youngster, the 16-year-old uh, Olympic Winter Games champion at double the distance, Zhang Xinjie is in fourth at the moment. This is uh, de Smets now to lose control of. Siegel is right over his shoulder. Could be very interesting to see what uh, Heisman does. Kai Hausman is lurking behind Siegel, who's got dual attention now, but he's okay. Nearly had a little slip at the end there. Desmet over Siegel by a tenth of a second. And then Kai Hausman finishing in a competitive third place. They all just had a little bit more space because of the unfortunate disqualification of Murat Taktachi. The win for Stein de Schmidt of Belgium, Pietro Siegel in second place. Kai Hausmann with a good third place time.
Will it be sufficient? Number three of seven coming up. Jordan-Pierre Gilles of Canada, the leader in World Cup competition over 500 metres this season, is in the race along with Diane Selye of uh, Poland, Yoshinaga Kazuki of Japan, and uh, well done to the young man from Bulgaria, Asen Gurov, wearing 98, who has got through at the age of 17 to the second stage. It's another big beginning from Martin Collins of Croatia who had a very good preliminary round. He just about held on there to third place. Looked like he might have been in danger of going down. Pierre Gilles over Selye, Collins, Gurov, but uh, now we're going to see this one uh, halted. Well, That looked like uh, a difficult one. It's attention being given here on the side of the rink. So we have a look at Jordan Pierre Gilles and we have a look back at this race. saw it didn't you on the uh, replay the uh, breaking of the blade it just pinged away so naturally the race has to be uh, halted for safety reasons So the aftermath of the broken blade means that we now have a restart to this third heat in the men's 500 metres. They've already been through the preliminary round. And the officials happy that all is well and good on the ice. Here we go again. It's a very good beginning from Collins. Might have even been better this time than before as he slots into second place behind Pierre Gilles. Cellier in third place. This is going to be fascinating. This is really going to be interesting to see. Oh, it's Cellier gone. I was about to say to see who makes a commitment and who risks making an overcommitment. And we lose Cellier. Yoshinaga's in third position. Collins. May well have done enough, but uh, Yoshinaga disagrees. He's come round into second place, and Collins is out of position. What an excellent race that was from Yoshinaga Kazuki of Japan, who finishes just behind the World Cup leader, Jordan Pierre Gilles. And poor young Diani Cellier losing his footing and losing his chance to go into the quarter final stage. That start set us up for a really engrossing tactical affair. And 
Well done, Yoshinaga. What a cool pass to get beyond Collins, who lunged for the line, knowing that he hadn't quite done it. But in front of all of that drama was a carefree looking Jordan Pierre Gilles who raced it so well. Jordan Pierre Gilles and uh, Yoshinaga Kazuki advancing. Martin Collins waits. Quite a quick time. Diani Sillier, who was right in the mix, faded away. Heat number four, men's 500 meters on this first day of competition in Dresden, Germany. Felix Roussel of Canada, along with Łukasz Kuszynski of Poland. Radek Fikus of Czech Republic, Daniel Yoon from the United States of America, and Kazakhstan's Masai Zajakshibayev, who was very good in the preliminary round. It's Roussel. But uh, Łukasz Kuszynski started reasonably well. Zajakshibayev now has got some work to do to push into the front two, Yoon of the United States of America is in fourth position. It is Felix Roussel, the 22-year-old from Quebec. That's all changing now. Oh, and we've lost Daniel Yoon. Kuszynski is in front of Roussel. They're going to go through those two. And Jack Shibayev. That's a fast third place time for Nasaid uh, Zakshibayev. Vladek Fikas of Czech Republic, fourth position with Daniel Yoon, the teenager from the USA, losing his footing. He's not in a bad position, is uh, the 27-year-old from Kazakhstan, Jack Shibayev. And there is Wukash Kuszynski. Three-time European Championship medalist. He wins it ahead of Roussel. And Jack Shibayev in third. Daniel Yu not able to finish. Three heats to go in the men's 500 metres. Action-packed one coming up here. We've got Quentin Furcock, who's fifth in the 500 metres standings. Miyata Shogo, young man from uh, Japan. Daniel Tibors of Hungary. Yi Jongmin of the Republic of Korea and Netherlands Hugo Bosma. This could be a very good race. Let's see how it pans out. The start from Miata was good, right up their level with Furcock. And they've got to be very careful, could so easily have gone into each other. Exploiting all of that is Lee Jong Min, who's now emerged to lead this. The 25 year old bronze medalist in Montreal in the 1,000 metres at the start of the World Cup season. He is ahead of Quentin Furcock. Hugo Bosma of the Netherlands now up in third. It really has gone in twists and turns, this one. Bosma does brilliantly. Oh, that's impressive. And uh, that, as uh, Furcock just disappears away from the race. Not sure exactly what happened to him there. E wins it. Bosma second, Miata third. Contan Furcock ending up in fifth position. Let's look back at it and... Enjoy once more this enthralling heat. It's one of the most interesting races we've had so far today. On 
there was plenty of change outside of the leader, but he remained very calm, Yi Jongmin. Now, unsurprisingly, this is being looked at again. A race of that complexity. There are a couple of instances warranting further scrutiny for the officials. So we can't confirm anything just at the moment. So the official video review is in progress at the moment. I think it was the coming together of uh, Miata and Furcop that was one of the uh, orders of business to be uh, looked at. Certainly things very uh, intriguing at the end of the race. And we await clarification. Still to come, we've got 1,000 metres races. Two sets of heats, women's and men's, to bring you. And we've also got some relay quarter finals. So a lot still to come at this ISU short track speed skating World Cup in Dresden, Germany, at the Joy Next Arena. I think that Kontan Furcock and his team will be hopeful that he was impeded. This is the longest and most complicated review that we've had so far couple of things to look at meanwhile we're getting set for heat number six and there we go Kontan Furcock has been advanced Miata Shogo penalized so that has Changed things somewhat. Lee Jong Min and Hugo Bosma through automatically, and at that moment at the end of the race, costing Miata. to heat number six, the men's 500 metres. Bohr from the Netherlands, Nadalini from Italy, Howard from the USA, So from Korea Republic and Carr from New Zealand. Inside it is uh, Tuan Bohr. And uh, he's had real attention right at the start from Marcus Howard. Howard doing a good job in pressurising. He's making life very, very difficult for the Dutch skater, but he's lost his position there, Howard. So is in second place. Natalini, the Italian, third. New Zealander Carr is fourth. Already we've got... Uh, Video reviews that are going to have to happen at the conclusion of this race, unsurprisingly. 
so nothing to be confirmed as they come around uh, to cross the line. Boer, Nadalini and Carr, the first three. Carr not that far behind Nadalini, but uh, Howard, who attacked the race right from the beginning, ultimately finishing fourth. So in last place, but I think there's quite a lot to uh, scrutinise here. This at the beginning has got to be surely looked at. Is that going to be problematic for Tuan Boer? And what about the state of play for Soyira there? Was there contact from uh, Thomas Nadalini? We might be a little way away from knowing the state of play. Over to the officials. Is there any concern for this gentleman's uh, progression? Thomas Nadalini. His proximity to Soyira is being reviewed. One imagines that has to be uh, an area of scrutiny for the officials. I think we are getting closer to a decision. Yes, not good news for Thomas Nadalini. He has been penalised and Soyira is advanced along with uh, Tian Bo and Joshua Carr of New Zealand, the 23-year-old engineering undergraduate at the University of Melbourne in Australia. And now we have confirmation of the uh, failure to give way. Trouble for Nadalini. This takes us to the last heat in the men's 500 metres. Kim Tae Sung, Andrew Ho, Lee Kun, Sebastian Lepap, Nico Anderman. Another race that is going to be very difficult to get out of. Kim Tae Sung starts well to take early control. There might have been a little collision there. Just wondering about Andrew Ho of the United States of America and uh, Lee Kun. Le Pap is in fourth position. Kim ahead of Ho by a long, long way. The 22-year-old Dunkirk University undergraduate is ignoring everyone else and looking yet again extremely smooth. This is lovely from Kim as Lee Kun gets uh, into a position to finish third with Ho in second place. So Kim Tae-sung victorious. And we look back at this again and the start, which was a real tussle between Ho and Lee.
looking very assured, Kim Tae-sung. He was very close to a medal in the 500 metres last season in Dresden. Is he going to get one this time? He certainly is through to the quarter-final stage with Andrew Ho. And that brings us to the end of the heat in the men's 500 metres. And we've got just over 10 minutes now before we continue our coverage. The women's 1,000 metres is going to be the next item on the track.
more action in the Joy Next Arena in Dresden. The heats in the women's 1,000 metres competition. Two different 1,000 metre events taking place at this World Cup. We had the first set of heats in the other competition earlier on in the day. Now we turn our attention to the athletes drawn in this particular bracket. And it's great to have your company. Thank you so much, wherever you are watching from, for being part of this ISU short track speed skating weekend in Dresden. A four-strong first race. Elisa Confortola of Italy wearing number 34. 39 is Park ji of the Republic of Korea. Uliana Dubrova wears 90. She's 21 from Ukraine. And 160 is Aliona Volkovitskaya of Kazakhstan. But there is Elisa Konfortola, the reigning European champion over 1,500 metres. Aliona Volkovitskaya, a couple of years older at 23 than Konfortola. There's the oldest in this field, 24 year old Park ji of Seoul, a graduate of the Korea National Sport University. Nine laps of the track in the women's 1,000 metres. This is heat number one. The top two go through automatically to the quarter-final stage. And the fastest third-place places are very limited here. Just one of them up for grabs. It is Uliana Dubrova of Ukraine, the 21-year-old Olympian from Beijing who has chosen to go out and attack this leading the way with Elisa Konfortola the European champion over 1500 behind her Park is in third place bronze medalist in this event at the Montreal World Cup her first ever individual World Cup medal and if she is victorious in any of the uh, categories here finishes in the top three it'll be World Cup medal number 10 for her now she's making her move to go round Dubrova and slot in behind Comfortola. That's a job well done by Park, who now has found her way to the front of the pack. Not a great surprise to see Park and Comfortola easing beyond Dubrova. And as we reach the bell, this is looking pretty cut and dried so far. Dubrova is going to be quite a way behind uh, Comfortola. So Park takes the win. Comfortola second place. They go through to the quarter final. Dubrova 1 minute 32.08. It's the time everyone now will be looking to beat and uh, then some. Tidy display that from Park ji -Yun. Has been a world champion in relay competition and we're going to bring you some relays later on. But first of all, the confirmed qualifiers, Park ji -Yun and Lisa Comfortola in this first heat. The women's 1,000 metres. We move to heat number two. We have in this one Courtney Soro of Canada. Silver medalist at the Four Continents Championships earlier in the season. She wears number two. Gloria Iorati, twice a World Junior Championship medalist. Courtney Soro slots in behind Gloria Iorati as uh, now we see Song Yifei, the 19-year-old youngest in this from uh, China, move into 
a stronger position at the front of the pack, and that just forces a reaction from Jorati. We also have Adide van Urschot wearing 87 of the Netherlands, 20-year-old, who's won two relay gold medals this season in World Cups. And Hanna Sokolowska of Poland, who competed at the Dresden World Cup last year. Great that she's back in World Cup competition, the uh, pole after having uh, surgery last year for a herniated disc in her spine. And we've lost two of them, and that will uh, possibly prompt uh, a further look. Van Orschot and Sokolovska, the two who've uh, tumbled. Jorati still leads with Saro second and Song third. Two video review activities will be in progress once this race is finished and uh, the bell has been reached. Saro moving into the lead, going into this last lap of the track, last of nine. And Saro beats uh, Yoriati into second place. The Italian holds off Song. But we have got more to look at. Let's remind ourselves of the action in this Women's 1,000 metres, heat number two in Dresden. So there's a lot to be unpicked and unpacked by the officials before we can give you uh, absolute clarity. All eyes on uh, Courtney Siro, who made her Winter Olympic debut in Beijing. Sokolovska going into Siro. And it's the involvement of Tita Van Orschot that also makes this complicated. It looks as though the decision has been reached by the officials. not going to have any changes to things so Courtney Siro and Gloria Yorati first and second Song Yifei in third place four take to the ice in heat number three Shim Saki is one of them We have here Shim Saki wearing uh, number six, wearing 13, Danae Blay of Canada. Eunice Lee of the United States of America wears 73, and wearing 83 is Nakashima Mire of Japan, who competed at the World Junior Championships in Dresden last year. She's making her World Cup debut. So it is Blay, the 24 year old from Quebec. She leads over Shim, who turned 27 last month. 
twice an Olympic Winter Games relay champion. And also two youth uh, Olympic Winter Games titles for the uh, decorated athlete from the Republic of Korea. Shim now has decided to lead this one. Eunice Lee, who turns 20 next weekend, is looking for a way through to get beyond Blay. Blay trying to shut her down. Lee's running out of opportunities to do that. They've all stayed very tight, very close to each other, and no chance came for Eunice Lee, but she was reasonably fast. Shim, the winner, Blay in second place. A, quite a compact race. All four reasonably close to each other. Let's remind ourselves of how it was that Shim Saki has earned herself a place in the quarter-final stage. Jim Saki and Dene Blay advancing. Eunice Lee, third position, a time of 1 minute 30.953 seconds. This is heat number four in the women's 1,000 metres competition at the Dresden World Cup. Eight heats in all. Kim Gilly. Wearing number four. Fourth in the 1,000 uh, metres standings is the 19-year-old uh, from Korea Republic. And we have Ariana Siegel wearing at number 30. 59 is Madina Janbusinova of Kazakhstan. Great Britain's Holly Hoyland wears 126 and 129 is Diana Mikhailchuk of Ukraine. So Adiana Siegel, the oldest, the second oldest, I should say, in this race, is in second position. Her only World Cup gold came in this building last year in the 2000 metres relay event. Madina Jambushinova, third. Sigel close to Kim. Just to remind you, the top two are the only ones who go through outright. You have a chance if you're third, but a very slender one. Nothing looking like it's going to change or needs to change for those two. Kim and Sigel with Jambosinova in third position. Had a real sense of uh, calmness about it, the start from Kim. Good control. And control was exerted throughout the rest of the race from the 19-year-old, this impressive young competitor who won the World Junior Championship title in this building, in this event, a year ago. Must have very, very fond memories of the city of Dresden, Kim Gilly, and they continue to be fond as she moves through to the quarter-finals with Ariana Sigel. Adina Shambosinova will not join. And now an opportunity to see the leader 
in the World Cup competition this season. Kristen Santos Griswold of the United States of America. Kristen Santos Griswold on the inside, the leader in World Cup competition this season. But uh, early on it is uh, Jana van Kerkhoff who takes the lead and now that's been uh, usurped by Lu Xuen, the 17 year old in this young Chinese squad that's come to the Dresden World Cup. Van Kerkhoff, the uh, oldest in the field. She is about twice the age of uh, Lu Xuen and has a great collection of uh, Olympic Winter Games honours. We also have Sara Luka Bachkai of Hungary, seven times a European Championship medalist, wearing number 53, and the uh, local athlete Paola Kuntoszewski, who's uh, like Lou, just 17, is in fifth position at the moment. Santos Griswold has already had two wins over 1,000 metres in World Cup competition this season. She's top in this event. She's fourth in the 1,500. She's second overall. She's having quite some season. And she's comfortably going to win this unless something extremely dramatic happens of her own volition. Santos Griswold cruises over the line. And second place won well there by Schwen. Lee Schwen doing an excellent job, the teenager. Bold racing, she attacked it from the very beginning, tried to get round in front of Santos Griswold and Van Kirchhoff. And her boldness ultimately paid off. So there is going to be one matter of review here. But it's all of no real consequence of the remarkable Christian Santos Griswold. But it is of concern to the rest of the pack. Seems that it's going to be Van Kirchhoff and Bachkai that will be the focus of attention. It's an interesting one. So what does this mean for the Hungarian delegation watching on? Is there a reprieve for Van Kirchhoff coming? Getting ready to move to heat number six. So still three more to come. There we go. Yara van Kirchhoff has been advanced. She joined Santos Griswold and Lee Schwen in the quarterfinal stage. Sara Luka Bachkai of Hungary penalised. Did wonder, didn't you, uh, looking at it? have the official confirmation now. Susanna Schulting is in this race, the champion from last season, having had some torrid injury times of most unfortunate accident 
at the end of last year. Susanna Schulting wearing one. Claudia Gagnon wears 19. 91 is Svetlana Repetska. And 111 is Hedvig Hilda. And the Norwegian has chosen to go out in front and uh, race her race and uh, take this on her terms. She amazingly only started skating at the age of 19, Hedvig Hilda, or started short track speed skating. She's 22 now. She was a long track skater until 2017. Took a break due to knee trouble. Came to short track in 2020. Great decision for her. Now it is Claudia Gagnon, the world uh, junior champion in the relay from uh, several years ago. She has a really big collection of World Cup honours. They're all in relays. Never won anything in Dresden. That might well change this weekend. And Schulting, who has 30 major senior gold medals. When you look at uh, the Olympics, the World Championships and the Continental Championships, not factoring in the World Cup honours, it's going to be obviously a major favourite to take something here in Dresden now that she's uh, back in business. Comfortable for Schulten, Gagnon takes second. Third place goes to Svetlana Repetska and uh, Hedvig Hilda finishes in fourth. I've got to admire Hedvig Hilda not being at all intimidated by the quality of the field. I mean, it's got to be quite something when you stand next to Susanna Schulting, look down the line and see that she's there. But she did everything she could, the uh, Norwegian, and produced a very credible performance. But it is Schulting back in World Cup competition. Schulting with the win. Claudia Gagnon of Canada, second. No uh, place in the uh, quarterfinals for Svetlana Repetska. We've got two races to come now. The women's 1,000 metres heat number seven, the penultimate heat. Hannah Desmet of Belgium, bronze medalist at the Olympic Winter Games over this distance. Hannah Desmet, who is third in the 1,000 metres World Cup standings, second over 1,500, fourth overall. She's won three races this season. We also have Olga Tihonova of Kazakhstan. She wears 36. Gwendolyn Daude of France wearing 69. 100 is Zhang Jianning of the People's Republic of China and uh, Yamana Rina of Japan is 104. And this is the Japanese skater, graduate of sports science from Yamanashi Gakuin in Kofu, who leads over Zhang Jianning, who's the youngest in the field at 18. Has very happy memories, Zhang, of this place from January of last year, the uh, World Junior Championships, where she uh, stood on the relay podium. And Hannah Desmet now is making the move round the outside, but she's judged nicely. And Desmet will ease her way with just stunning, stunning poise and power beyond the rest of them. Tactical perfection from Hannah Desmet. Now, what about uh, Dode to get beyond Jang? It's on the line, Jang ahead of Dode by hundreds, but Hannah Desmet was well clear of the rest of them and the young athlete from China has done excellently to hold off for Gwendolyn Dode. But Hannah Desmet timing her move perfectly from the back of the pack. 
to earn a place in the quarterfinal stage of Dresden. Experienced Belgian booking her place in the next round. She is the reigning European champion over 1,000 metres, and it was easy to see why in that race, beating Zhang Jianning, who held off a challenge from Gwendolyn Dordet of France. And we move to the last heat now. number eight of the women's 1,000 meters. Dresden, Germany hosting this World Cup and we've got four in this particular race. Red. Seattle's Corinne Stoddard of the USA on the inside wearing number 10. 37 is Hirai Ami of Japan. 45, Chloe Olivier of France and 47 is Rebecca Silatze Nemet of Hungary. Stoddard just has a glance across at the Hungarian making the move round on the outside. So far this season Stoddard has had a couple of podium finishes at the World Cups over 1500 and also one silver medal in the 1,000 metres. Hidai now is in second position. The athlete from Toyota, the town that uh, used to be called Koromo, but was renamed after the car company. She now trains at uh, Toyota Motor Corporation, like quite a lot of the uh, short track athletes. Chloe Olivier, oh well, we'll come back to that in a moment because we've just lost Olivier. I was about to uh, talk a little about her, but uh, unfortunately she's moved out of contention in this race. So Stoddard ahead of uh, Hirai and a long way ahead of Hirai to progress to the quarterfinals. It's America's Corinne Stoddard, then uh, Hirai Ami with Rebecca Silatsinemet finishing third in this race. Poor Chloe Olivier, the athlete who has only just turned 20 and who enjoyed success at the European Championships earlier this year. Didn't have any fortune in this race. Corinne Stoddard and Hirai Ami, the two who have advanced to the quarter-final stage of the women's 1,000 metres in Dresden at this ISU World Cup of short track speed skating. And that brings to a close the women's 1,000 metres heats. We now go to the men's event. We've got some very compact and busy races coming up here. A lot of six strong heats. The men's 1,000 meters. So, so difficult to get good position in the start when there's six out there. We have Brendan Corey of Australia, Niall Tracy of Great Britain, Tristan Navarro of France, Clemens uh, Popper 
of Germany, Jonathan So of the USA and Jiang Bohao of the People's Republic of China. It is 17-year-old Jiang who is leading the way, fresh from mixed relay gold at the Olympic Winter Games, the Youth Olympic Winter Games, I should say, in Gangwon. And the experienced Australian, Brendan Corey, is in second place, just holding off the Midlander from Great Britain, Niall Tracy. He was born in Solihull near Birmingham. Just the first two will go through to the quarterfinals. It makes this much greater jeopardy for all of the athletes. You've got to really push to get into that top two and not be content with the possibility of third place being good enough. So we should have some quite bold finishes as a result. Corey doing well ahead of Jang. And Brendan Corey does take it with Navarro almost squeezing in ahead of Jang, but uh, the youngest athlete in the race finishing second. He did wonderfully, showing real maturity and poise. Uh, Brendan Corey, whose best ever World Cup performances individually have been in Dresden. Hoping for a place on the podium at last. He equaled his best World Cup performance last season. He was in very good form. I'm sure many of you remember watching it. And he raced well there. A gentleman born originally in uh, New Brunswick in uh, Canada. I say born originally. One can only really be born once, can't one? But you know what I mean. Brendan Corey and Jang Bohao advancing to the quarterfinals. Uh, a good effort from Tristan Navarro. This is the second heat for the men in the 1,000 metres. We've got nine heats in total. Wearing 49 is Andrea Cassinelli. 30-year-old from Turin. Twice an Olympic Winter Games medalist. Nine laps of the track, the men's 1,000 metres heat number two, wearing 40, Nutilek Kazgali of Kazakhstan. 49 is Andrea Cassinelli of Italy. 117, Petr Yasapati of Hungary. 126, Kim gun U of the Republic of Korea. 173, Liu Yang Peng of the People's Republic of China. And 178, Farrell Tracy of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Kim gun U who leads at the moment, has behind him Petr Yazapati, who just uh, a couple of days ago celebrated his 21st birthday. Challenge coming to Kim and Yazapati yet. If it comes from anyone, it, well, I was about to say it could come from Liu Yang Peng, but he's dropped back. Kazgali has moved in front, and we lost in the middle of all that. Farrell Tracy. So, does this give an opportunity here for Kazgali to make his way past Yazapati? Here he comes. It's going to be tight, and it is going to be the gentleman from Kazakhstan who finishes second behind Kim Gun U. Kim with the victory and uh, Nutilek Kazgali finishing second. And we just lost the uh, challenge of Liu Yangpeng. Good racing from Kazgali right at the end. 
Although, there is now a review in progress. So we await total clarification on who has earned their place in the quarterfinals. And one wonders if it's that incident with uh, Farrell Tracy that's going to be the focus of attention for the officials. Tracy, 28, twice an Olympian. And he also had a great academic uh, moment last year, graduated with his master's degree in business management in sport from De Montfort University. So the discussions continue. And the outcome has been reached. doesn't appear as though we're going to have any change. So Kim Ganu and Nurtilek Kazgali, the two who have gone through and uh, there was no change to Andrea Casinelli's position, unable to finish this race. The men's 1,000 metres heat number three in Dresden, Roberts Kruisberg's of Latvia wears number eight, the first Latvian ever to win a World Cup event, and it was a gold medal in this particular discipline in Montreal last year. And we've got Nathan Thomas of Poland wearing 69. Two will earn themselves a place in the quarter final stage in the Dresden World Cup. Roberts Krusbergs wears eight. 69 is Nathan Thomas of Poland, 96 Tarek Omaradzic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, 105 is Zenek Sepal of the Czech Republic, 133 Mohamed Burzdag of Turkey, and 184 is Dan Kos of the Netherlands. And it is Kos who just recently, uh, several days ago, celebrated his 21st birthday, moves to the front in his senior World Cup debut and uh, that is the uh, end uh, unfortunately for Mohamed Burstag's uh, quest to get uh, into the quarter-final stage the young man he's only 16 Burstag in his first World Cup has gone into the uh, boards at the side Chris Berg's quite happy at the moment in second position with uh, Thomas of Poland the gentleman behind him Koss and Kruisbergs reach the bell, looking as though they are starting to pull away a little now from Nathan Thomas. And those two, Koss and Kruisbergs, go through with Kruisbergs taking the victory. Thomas finishing third. But just the top two that go to the quarterfinal stage. Quite a routine race this from Dan Koss and Robert Kruisbergs.
Heat number three ends in a win for Roberts, Chris Bergs and Dan Koss takes second place. Latvia and Netherlands, the happiest delegations. As we move on to the next heat. This is heat number four in the men's 1,000 metres in Dresden. Pascal Dion of Canada wears number four. And he was a bronze medalist at the Seoul World Cup in December. We have Itzak Delat of the Netherlands, wearing number 23. 32 is Adil Galiachmetov. 106, Etienne Batier. 135, Timofi Kochelko. And 164, Frederik Pedersen. Could be in for a close race here. Pascal Dion, Itzak Dilat, Adil Galiachmetov, Etienne Batier, Timofi Kochelko, and Frederick Pedersen are your six. As Dion, the 29 year old from Montreal, very experienced and twice a medalist at the Olympic Winter Games, leads ahead of Dilat, who's the same age as Dion. Three times a relay world champion in Sac de Lat, including the mixed relay title last year. And it is Galiachmetov who is in third place, the first short track speed skater from Kazakhstan to get onto a World Cup podium in the 1500 metres. The young Norwegian Frederick Pedersen is in third place. Only 17. It's a very, very inexperienced Norwegian team here, but a promising team. Some great youngsters coming through for them. And we wish them well at uh, what is for many of them their first ever World Cup competition. Now, it is, as we expected, those three who are quite tight going to the line. It is going to be, I think, Delat and Dion. Galiachmatov was close to Delat, and it is going to uh, come down to a photo finish. Pascal Dion winning it. Thought it would be close, and it uh, didn't disappoint. Very tight, but it was uh, Itzag Delat. We have a look at the young French athlete, Etienne Batier. His 20th birthday is coming up on the 16th of February. Pascal Dion and Itzag Delat the two who have qualified for the quarter-final stage. Adil Galiachmetov very narrowly raced out of it. Heat number five, and we have Park Gion in action, the reigning World Cup champion, and the leader over 1,000 this season. He starts well. And his fans love what they've seen. A little cry out of approval from the stands. Park Gion over. Friso Emmons, who wears number 14. We also have number 81, Wesley Park. 76 is Metehan Atan. 
And uh, 137 Yaroslav Morozov of U Ukraine and uh, 186 Nikolai Bjerka of Norway. Who had a, a difficult beginning, the 17-year-old. I just remind you again, it's a very, very young Norwegian team here. Now, what will Friso Eamon's uh, fancy doing? His concern is Wesley Park just behind. So he's got Park in front and Park behind, and he's Parks himself in second at the moment. But it is feasible that a change will come. Trying to make himself part of it as well is 22 uh, year old Metehan Atan of uh, Turkey. Park may have lost that chance to uh, impose himself on the top two. So it is Park Gion, Friso Emmons, and uh, raced out of it in the end, Wesley Park of the USA. Calmly done by the front two, especially by that gentleman who exudes a confidence and quality whenever he steps onto the ice. He's closing in, Park Gion, on 20 World Cup gold medals. The reigning world champion, living up to pre-match billing. Park Gion and Friso Amons, the qualifiers for the quarter-final stage in the 1,000 metres for men. Four heats left. Heat number six in the men's 1,000 metres. Luca. Spechenhauser, 23 from Lombardy in the beautiful mountainous settlement of Bormio. It is on the inside, Luca Spechenhauser, who has uh, taken early control of this with uh, Furkan Akar of Turkey, wearing number 31 in second place, the bronze medalist at the European Championships in Gdansk last year, the first ever for his nation. Now we see at number 72, Caleb Park of the USA, whose uh, younger brother Wesley has just competed. Going into a leading position. 68 is Bola Shevontovic of Hungary. A young athlete who won four gold medals at the Winter European Youth Olympic Festival. From number 91, Dominic Andaman of Austria, Vienna, whose brother Nicholas has already competed in the 500, leaving just uh, Rafael Schlossarek of Germany, whose senior international debut is marked at this World Cup. Speckenhauser remains in the lead. Furkanaka is close to him, though, but what could be problematic is uh, Bolaj Bontovic, and there he goes. Smoothly done, Bontovic found the gap, and Akar now has just drifted away. And that's well-timed to perfection from Bolaj Bontovic. He finishes behind Spechelhauser of Italy with Furkan Akar, who was second for much of it, ultimately finishing third.
Luka Spechenhauser and Bolaj Bontovic, the two who have qualified for the quarter-final stage with Furkan Alkar missing out. The anti-penultimate heat for the men in the 1,000 metres in Dresden. Chang Sung Woo of the Republic of Korea wearing 26. On the inside it is Jang Sung Woo who moves into the lead. A little jostling early on between Li Xin Yu of the People's Republic of China and Italy's Mattia Antonioli. We also have Peter Riches of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. But unfortunately, just as I said it, Riches was the one who then uh, went uh, hurtling out of the race. What a shame that was for Riches, who got himself into a nice position, the Dutch-based skater. So 17-year-old Lee Shin Yu is second behind uh, Jang Sung Woo. First time that he's competed uh, in the Dresden World Cup, Jang. He's an undergraduate at Korea University, one of the most prestigious in the country. Moving through on the inside to cut off Lee is the uh, Italian Antonioli. He has uh, international honours at continental and World Cup level in relay events. And we have uh, Adrian de Wagter of Belgium in third position. But the front two are moving away with a little more conviction and uh, De is not going to get there it's uh, Jang and Antonioli who finished first and second with Adrian De Wagter of Belgium missing out by about four tenths Might look at that again, just to uh, determine the cause of Peter Rich's uh, departure. And indeed, we have got a video review. of no concern to Jang Sung Woo. He is victorious. Mattia Antonioli is second and there's no change to Peter Rich's station after a pretty quick video review. Two more heats to go in the men's 1,000 metres in Dresden. William Dongenu of Canada, who's having a great season, is in this race. He's third in the overall standings as we look at Alejandro Rivero Meerschalk of Belgium, 17-year-old debutant at this level. 132 is Felix Pigeon of Poland formerly of Canada. Forty four Yakebulan Shemukhanov of Kazakhstan. Medalist at two World University Games. Right. Heat number eight, the penultimate heat in the men's one thousand meters. Top two advance to the quarter final stage. We also have uh, Hayashi Kose of Japan. He's leading this, wearing number 42. In fourth position is Luxembourg's Peter Murphy, wears 129. Although uh, Murphy has had problems. He 
Dongenu. The uh, very uh, physically imposing skater moves to the front. Number 42 trying to make his move through Hayashi. Hayashi with a bold gambit. But Donjinu just about uh, maintains that grip. Now keep an eye on Felix Pigeon of Poland as to whether he can get into the front too with not much time remaining in this race. The bell is reached and now the move will actually come from Yekebelun. Shemulkhanov of Kazakhstan, and he's going to go ahead of Donjinu. That was big and aggressive from Shemulkhanov, and he wins it. Donjinu second, and uh, Felix Pigeon ultimately does finish in third place. Big changes towards the conclusion of the race, and 24 year old Yakevalin Shemulkhanov did brilliantly. is a video review as we look over the shoulder of 23 year old Peter Murphy from Luxembourg winter European Youth Olympic Festival champion at 1500 meters yeah, is there an issue there when it comes to Felix Pigeon and uh, Hayashi Kose. Does the pole risk a penalty here? Might be that Hayashi Kose has a more than even chance of going via advancement into the next round. Ashley Corte has been advanced. Felix Pigeon penalized. So Ashley joins Yekevelin Shamukhanov and William Donjinu in the quarter final and we come to the last heat let's just have confirmation of that uh, illegal late pass made there by Felix Pigeon it's just too uh, aggressive in that move Stephen Dubois of Canada in this heat. The overall leader in the men's World Cup. Second in the 1,000 metres. Stephen Dubois starts with purpose. Slotting in behind him is Watanabe Keita, the 31-year-old from Saitama Prefecture in Honshu, Japan. Behind is Pavel Adamski of Poland. He's been a relay medalist at European Championship level. Now we have the gentleman from Hong Kong, China, Lord Jan Shuo, who is a water moment in third, 18 year old in his World Cup debut, but Adamski has put himself back into the race and uh, there was a moment of opportunity for Watanabe but Dubois shut it down 
Meanwhile, Maxim Maximov, still a week away, over a week away from his 18th birthday, was up there in third position. So we've got a couple of uh, people trying to make challenges for Dubois Watanabe. But it's Lo Jan Shuo who's the most likely to do it. It does seem as though Dubois and Watanabe are starting to move quite comfortably away from the rest. They come to the bell. Still it is Lord Jan Shaw who's in third, but that seems rather immaterial because Dubois and Watanabe have made it to the quarterfinals. Lord Jan Shaw finishing in third position, but only the top two have a guaranteed place. You have to rely on advancement if you're outside of that. Confirmed results in heat number nine, the last heat for the men in the 1,000 metres. Dubois and Watanabe are through to the quarterfinals in Dresden. We have a break of about 10 minutes coming up now before the women's 3,000 metre relay quarterfinals. So we'll see you in about 10 minutes' time for more action from the Dresden World Cup and the Joy Next Arena.
On the action goes in Dresden, the 3,000 metre relay quarter finals in the women's competition. The next order of business on this packed day of qualification. The finals all taking place tomorrow and it's great to have your company to enjoy this first heat. We have the Republic of Korea, China, Kazakhstan and Ukraine. Korea Republic second in the 3,000 meter relay standings. Coming into this, China fifth. Red. You're watching the first quarterfinal of the women's 3,000 meter relay event at the Dresden World Cup. The top two go through to the semi-final stage. The Third-place finishers could have two places available for them, but it all remains to be seen. China, fifth in the standings, the overall league table. Netherlands are the top-performing nation. We're going to see them later. Korea Republic, second. Canada, third. The United States of America, fourth. And it remains the People's Republic of China who are leading at the moment. And it's uh, Liu Wanyu on this particular leg. Behind her is uh, Park ji -yun. Kazakhstan in third position. Now they've made a move round into second, courtesy of uh, an effective change ever bringing Malika Yermak into play. 27 laps to be undertaken. 45 in the men's 5,000 metre equivalent race. And those heats are coming up after these three. It remains at Kazakhstan in second position. And they've exerted themselves well over China. It's now uh, the experienced Olga Tikhonova who's uh, looking for a good and uh, purposeful changeover, and that has kept Kazakhstan well positioned. It's, if anything, enhanced their credentials over China. But still no change at the very front. That is uh, Korea Republic all the way. Now, can this be the moment for China to come back in? That's a really good changeover, bringing in Jiang Jianning. So now it is China in the second of those automatic qualification places. And we are now getting close to the conclusion of the race, just 11 laps remaining. China back into second position, but it's really tight between the People's Republic of China and Kazakhstan. Now, Shim Suk Hee is at the head of the race, and there hasn't been a great deal to trouble Korea Republic so far. But when you only have a guaranteed place by finishing in the top two, there's real incentive to push in those final stages of the relay, and we might well see that from Kazakhstan. Take a risk to not have to watch and wait and see if their time is good enough. Because one of the third place finishers will miss out. At the moment, China doesn't have to worry about that because they've got their destiny in their hands with a handful of laps remaining. 
as have Korea Republic. Kazakhstan making one last attempt to secure the third or the second place, I should say. And now it is China who have moved into the lead. And that will prompt a, a response from the Republic of Korea. Here comes the response from Kim Gilly. And uh, she didn't like being in second there. Sorted that out pretty sharpish. Korea Republic over the People's Republic of China. Kazakhstan runs out of it into third. Four minutes, 15.13 was the provisional time being given there. We'll just wait for confirmation of that to see whether that is the number that uh, all of the other third place teams will be looking to get beyond. Just a moment of pressure perhaps put on Korea Republic by China towards the end of the race, but uh, Kim Gilly dealt with it. into the semi-finals, Korea Republic and the People's Republic of China with Kazakhstan, four minutes, 15.104. The uh, final time. This is heat number two in the quarter-final stage the women's 3000 meter relay competition at the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. Canada, Germany, Japan and the United States of America. We have here the United States of America and Canada. Canada a little higher up the uh, overall standings this season than the USA by uh, one place. They're third, the USA are fourth. And it's Canada leading the way at the moment with their neighbours uh, to the south in second place. Japan third, host nation of this World Cup trailing. Canada opting for Courtney Serro, Dane Blay. Claudia Gagnon and Renee Marie Sting. The USA have gone for the uh, combination of Christian Santos, Chris Wald, Corinne Stoddard, Julie Letta, and Eunice Lee. For Japan, it's Hirai Ami, Kurokawa Ki, Nakashima Mirei, and Yamana Rina. In Germany with Lisa Eckstein. Paula Kuntrosevsky, uh, Betty Mux, uh, and Svea Rota. It is Blay who is out in front as Canada maintain the lead, if not slightly extended as they change over. Behind them, Eunice Lee. It's Claudia Gagnon. At the front, uh, now hands over to Courtney Serro. Germany having a good go at it. Back in fourth place, they were always going to be struggling uh, with the likes of these teams. It's a tough draw for Germany, this very tough draw. up against some of the absolute finest relay teams on the planet. And the Canadians not allowing Santos Griswold uh, a way through into the lead. Just to remind you, it's the top two that will advance to the quarter final stage automatically. Yamana Arina of uh, Japan tries to 
Make an effective changeover just to allow the Japanese to eat up a little of that uh, margin. It's Letai with uh, Hirai Ami behind her. But so far, neither Canada nor the USA looks like they're going to yield at the front as we are into single figures in terms of laps remaining. Japan starting to disappear from those front two who are absolutely controlling it and not really too interested by the looks of things in a great race with each other because there's no need to uh, overdo things at this stage. Spirited effort from Yamanarina. Five laps to go. Japan could do this. They could manage to get around Canada and the USA, but it's a very difficult prospect. It's one that people have found hard to do this season in World Cup competition. The last few laps playing out in this quarterfinal in Dresden. Canada and the United States of America with Blay and Santos Griswold. And now the change has finally come. The USA easing into the lead. Timed very well by Santos Griswold. So USA over Canada, Japan in third place. And that time for the uh, Japanese is better than we saw from Kazakhstan by quite some way. So uh, good news there for the Japanese team in terms of a quarter-final spot, a semi-final spot, I should say. USA and Canada strong performance from them and Japan posting a decent third place time crucially for Japan that time better than Kazakhstan's in the previous heat we now go to the last quarter final just three in it Netherlands Hungary and Italy this race we have an opportunity to see the strongest performing nation in this event over World Cup competition this season the Netherlands and they're joined by Hungary and Italy and they've been absolutely fantastic since Canada won in Montreal on the 22nd of October it's been the Netherlands all the way in this particular event. They uh, won a week later in Montreal, then uh, victory at the Capital Indoor Stadium in Beijing on the 10th of December. And they were triumphant in Seoul for the Mokdong Ice Rink on the 17th of December to round off their year in some style. And what an embarrassment of riches they have in terms of the squad selection at their disposal. They've gone with Cassandra Velzebor and Michelle Velzebor, Selma Paltzma and Dida van Orschott. Nice uh, position to be in, isn't it, when you don't need to use Susanna Schulting and Yara van Kirchhoff.
And we have Hungary with uh, Rebecca Silitze Nemet, uh, Jofia Konya, Sara Luca Bachkai, Barbara Samogi. And the Italians have Ariana Siegel, Ariana Valcepina, Elisa Confortola, and Gloria Iorati. for Hungary in uh, this race with two third place athletes going through to the teams I should say going through to the semi-final stage if they maintain third position and come in quicker than that four minutes 15.104 uh, from Kazakhstan then all will be well of course there's plenty of time for all of that to change we still have just uh, about half of the contest left Coming up after this, we'll bring you as the final order of business in our coverage today, the heats in the men's 5,000 meter relay quarterfinals. Finals will take place on Saturday and Sunday of all of the events at this weekend's Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. I hope you're able to join us for those finals tomorrow and on Sunday. It's going to be some fantastic racing. Italy taking charge of this for the time being, knowing that the uh, Netherlands will time their move when it suits them. Five laps to go is a long time. It's at Selma Paltzma at the front of the pack at the moment with Ariana Siegel behind. Now the changeover comes to bring in Gloria Iorati. And... Cassandra Velzebor. The bell has been reached. Netherlands out in front and looking as though it will remain that way. Netherlands winning it. Italy second place and Hungary four minutes 12.72. So perfectly fine time there from the Hungarians. Netherlands and Italy taking the automatic spots in the semi-final stage as we are set for a showdown between these top relay nations over the weekend. And it will be so interesting to see if the Netherlands can win yet another one after their fantastic record coming into this weekend. Job done well and job done calmly by the Dutch. And Hungary qualifying with that four minutes, 12.682 for the semi finals. Finishing behind Italy, who in turn finished behind the Netherlands. And that brings to a close the women's 3,000 meter relay quarter final action in Dresden. In around 15 minutes time, we'll be back with the men's 5,000 meter relay quarterfinals. The last item on the agenda on this day of qualification in Dresden. Don't go too far away.
The action continues in Dresden. The ISU World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating and the 5,000 metre relay for men. The first of four quarterfinals coming your way. We have the People's Republic of China, Italy, Hungary, Germany and Turkey taking to the ice. We get to see the nation that is at the top of the World Cup standings, the People's Republic of China. And they are the only top five performing nation in this first quarter final. So a chance for them to stamp their authority on proceedings. For Germany, a great opportunity in front of uh, some friends and family in their home arena. And they are alongside the top performing nation this season. So a chance to really test themselves against the finest. So the city of Dresden hosting this uh, World Cup at the Joy Next Arena. And we move to the 5,000 metres relay for men. 45 laps of the track coming up. An opportunity right at the start to see the top performing nation in World Cup competition in this event, the People's Republic of China. And they have put Li Kun, Zhang Bohao, Zhang Tianyu and Zhang Xinjie into this race. That's their squad. Germany have Yang Hun Ben Jung, Robin Bendig, Jonas Hammermüller and Raphael Schlossarek. The Hungarians have Bolaj Bontovic, Daniel Tibors, Mark Gismadia and Peter Yajapati. Italy have entered Pietro Sigel, Lucas Spechenhauser, Mattia Antonioli, Andrea Cassinelli, and Thomas Nadalini. Leaving Turkey with Furkan Akar, Metehan Atan, Mohamed Bozdag, and Murat Tatachi. They are fascinating races, these men's 5,000-metre relays. The, the long-form relay race, absolute contrast to the mixed relay approach. And it's a sort of physical game of poker 
trying not to show more than you need to. Relay success is about getting those transitions right and when you do make your move, timing it uh, just right. So the Italians are opting to stretch things now. The handover has been made to Lucas Spechenhauser. Germans in second position. And they have Lukas Kobuch. Now it is Jonas Samamula for the Germans. Italy happy to take this one by the scruff of the neck at the moment. Mattia Antonioli has to uh, watch on the uh, outside as China have come through to uh, take a lead now with uh, Zhang Xinjie. It's been interesting to see these young Chinese athletes coming to this World Cup event, some of them fresh from such bold and impressive performances at the Winter Youth Olympic Games in the Republic of Korea. You imagine what they are lacking in experience. They more than have it to substitute in confidence. And we have four of these quarterfinals. In the next race, we're going to see Canada, France, Great Britain, Kazakhstan and Norway. In the penultimate one, Belgium, Hong Kong, China, Korea Republic, Poland and Ukraine. And finally, we'll have Bulgaria, Japan, the Netherlands and the USA in the last of the races. So 22 laps remaining. People's Republic of China with their young squad out in front at the moment. A nation that has performed so impressively in these uh, relay events this season. They won in uh, Seoul in the lead up to this. Didn't win it at home in Beijing at the Capital Indoor Stadium but they were victorious in one of the races in Montreal. So they are ahead, but not by a huge margin over Canada coming into this, the penultimate of the World Cup events. The Canadians enjoying uh, success in Montreal at home in one of the uh, two World Cups, the first of the season. And then they were victorious in Beijing. So they've, uh, each of them, China and Canada, gone to each other's back gardens and won. Now the intensity increases, seeing the Germans uh, rather stretched and forced uh, further and further back. They just can't to uh, hold their own with this sort of pace now that's starting to creep in. Still it is China, then Italy, then Turkey. A lot of the uh, Turkish competitors had uh, good results at the European Championships in relay competition. Italy, and now Hungary moving into second position. People's Republic of China have momentarily dropped back into third. So the uh, responsibility now is theirs to uh, engineer themselves back into a qualifying position. They've done that now. Just the first and second will qualify. 
for the semi-final stage. Italy and China starting to get a little stretched. Hungary looking as though they might be struggling. Three laps remaining. Semi-final place is Italy's at the moment. Hungary have just moved ahead of this Chinese team. Now then, can Hungary hold on? What an outcome this would be for the Hungarians if they can hold on and book themselves a place. They've done it. Italy, then Hungary and the People's Republic of China just raced out of it. Great finish from the Hungarians. Bolaj Bontovic, Daniel Tibors, Mark Gismadia and Petr Yazapati. Italy's bold racing strategy, yielding dividends. Confirmation that Italy and Hungary advance the semi-finals and the leaders in World Cup competition this season in this event, the People's Republic of China, will not be in the semi-final stage. And that gives Canada a brilliant chance to get closer and closer to China at the top of the leaderboard and maybe even surpass them. In quarter-final two, we have Canada, Kazakhstan, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, France and Norway. Forty-five laps of the track to be undertaken by these five teams in the quest to make the quarter-final stage of the ISU World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating in Dresden at the Joy Next Arena. We have Canada with Stephen Dubois, Pascal Dion, Félix Roussel and William D'Angenou. It's not a bad team, that is it. <laughs> Goodness me. France, Quentin Fercox, Sebastian Lepape. Etienne Battier and Tristan Navarro. For Great Britain, Niall Tracy, Peter Riches, Kyle Ross Waddle, and Farrell Tracy. Kazakhstan entering Denis Nikisha, Adil Galiachmetov, Nutilek Kazgali, and Mesaid Jakshibaev. And the Norwegians with this young group have uh, Frederick Pedersen, Tinius Rambol Alme, Eric Anderson and Linus August Risnes. What a great experience for the young Norwegians in this kind of field. No question that Canada are the overwhelming favourites to progress the semi-final stage. It is China, Canada, Korea Republic, Belgium and Netherlands in the World Cup standings in this event. The athletes always enjoy coming to the uh, great city of Dresden for short track speed skating. It's a city that uh, is beautifully situated in Germany. Wonderful uh, natural landscape around it. Elbe River. There's a 
fabulous natural park, national park, I should say. Well, it's a natural park as well, but I think most parks are. And some of the uh, great architecture in Dresden, which has been reconstructed after its uh, destruction during the Second World War. And so many of the wonderful Baroque buildings were incredibly restored with uh, love and care and uh, scientific precision. But then you expect scientific precision in a city like Dresden because it is a real uh, hub of innovation, has been for a number of years. So there's plenty to enjoy for the athletes when they get a little downtime in this place. And on the subject of downtime, we've just had it there for the uh, Norwegian team. And that's unfortunate for them. We are around the halfway stage of proceedings. Canada still in a position of control. Kazakhstan second, France third, then Great Britain, then Norway. But uh, the Norwegians really quite some way back now. It's a big and bruising event, this, the 5,000 meter relay. And just to remind you that we will be bringing you all of the finals on Saturday and Sunday. So do please join us for all of our coverage from the Joy Next Arena. Finals tomorrow in the women's and men's 1500 metres. And we're going to have the women's and men's 1000 metres event number one because there is another of those to come on Sunday the mixed team relay will be taking place tomorrow and then we go on to the uh, finals that will be happening on the last day of competition and what a last day of competition it's going to be the women's and men's 3,000 meter relay finals and we'll also have the uh, women's and men's 500 meter finals and the second half of the double header of women's and men's 1,000 meters finals meanwhile back to this one and uh, Dennis Sindikisha bringing Kazakhstan into a leading position over the Canadians Eight laps to go for all bar the Norwegians who are uh, really starting to trail as expected. But they're giving in everything they have, these youngsters from Norway, and uh, good fortune to them as they develop their careers as uh, senior competitors. And they get more and more international experience. And it is the experienced Canadians who've now increased the pace and increased they're standing in this race they've gone back ahead over the uh, Kazakhstan team with uh, Felix Roussel playing a big role in that Angenou hands over to Stephen Dubois and just uh, behind him is Kazakhstan and the bell is reached Canada, Kazakhstan, well and truly out in front. They're going to pass easily into the semi-final stage. And that gives Canada the upper hand when it comes to their contest with China to be the World Cup champions this year. Let's look back at how it was that Canada got the job done.
Canada and Kazakhstan qualifying for the semi-final stage of the men's 5,000 meter relay in Dresden. Heat number three in the quarter final stage and we see the Republic of Korea, Belgium, Poland, Ukraine and Hong Kong, China. Belgium the fourth best nation this season in World Cup competition over 5,000 metres and the Republic of Korea the third strongest performers all of them have got the chance now to put a little pressure on China at the top of the standings is heat number three in the quarter-final stage of the men's 5,000 meter relay competition at the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. Belgium have brought into this race Stein de Smet, Adrian de Wachter, Enzo Proust and Alejandro Rivero Meerschalk. Hong Kong, China with Kwok Tsefung, Lo Jan Shuo, Yong Cheng Ri and Sui Xin for Republic of Korea. Their mighty squad is Park Ji On, Kim Tae Sung, Jang Sung Woo, and Yi Jong Min. The Poles entering Diane Selye, Wukash Kuszynski, Michał Niewinski, and Felix Pigeon. Leaving Ukraine with Oleg Hande, Danilo Fedorenko, Rostislav Leontenko, and Daniel Bergin. So it is Korea Republic who take early initiative in this 45 lap affair. And at the front for them is the top man, Park Ji On. Now it is Yi Jongmin. Korea Republic this season in the uh, relay events have managed to maintain a, a decent position courtesy of a couple of second place finishes. They uh, were runners up in Montreal on the 22nd of October and they also uh, did the same in Beijing on the 10th of December. The Belgians come into this having finished third at the uh, previous World Cup in Seoul at the Mokdong Ice Rink. And we are over the course of this weekend learning more and more about who is likely to top those World Cup standings. Oh, unfortunate. Video review is undoubtedly going to take place there. The Belgians really sent into turmoil. Just wonder what the outcome of that may be because there's a lot to be scrutinized. It'll be interesting to see from a Hong Kong China perspective what the outcome is there after the Belgians were sent uh, hurtling out of action.
Only the uh, top two are guaranteed to go to the semi-final, but there can be advancement. It is Diane Sellier of uh, Poland who was occupying second place there just for a moment, and now the uh, polls with Michał Niewinski still sit second. Just have to provide passing opportunity there. The uh, Ukrainians who are being lapped quite comprehensively. Turning into an entertaining one, this between Korea Republic and Poland. So two items of video review upon the conclusion of this race. What will it mean for Hong Kong, China and for Belgium? Among others, we'll discover soon. But what we do know is that Korea Republic and Poland are in their own race, really, at the moment, with 15 left. Frankly, looking thoroughly comfortable and convincing. And Poland have had those couple of European championships in Gdansk Square there. Relay teams in women's and men's competition have been so competitive, have been uh, battling for places on the podium, achieving it, raising the profile of the sport in their country. It's been a very exciting time for their relay teams. And all of it in the wonderful settlement of Gdansk as well, a great part of Poland. right up there with the uh, Korea Republic Poland maybe just toying with an opportunity to go into the lead and uh, there it comes that's a move well made will it last no <laughs> that's the end of that Lee Jong Min seizing control back for Korea Republic and now they're extending things at the front. Four laps to go in this penultimate heat in the men's quarter-final stage of the 5,000-metre relay competition at the Dresden World Cup. Felix Pigeon for Poland. And uh, there we have it. It is Poland taking it. Pigeon just doing enough right at the end to push his team in front. Korea Republic finishing second. And now we have Belgium across the line for third position. But as I mentioned, there was some uh, video review in progress. We'll just bring you the outcome of that at the conclusion of the race. And that is one of the items for attention. Plenty to be scrutinised by the officials. And still one race remains in Dresden.
the wait goes on. The review remains in progress. And will that lead to any uh, changes, any advancements? All eyes on the officials. Is that uh, fracas between Belgium and Hong Kong, China, that has attracted the most attention by the looks of things? And are we close to having a verdict? It seems so. Belgians might be holding out some hope here. Meanwhile, the uh, competitors in the next uh, Race are getting ready to take to the ice. The final race here in Dresden. Well, Hong Kong, China penalised, but no change to the standings. Poland and Korea Republic into the semi-finals. This is why Hong Kong China were penalised. It's time for the last race in our coverage today. This big day of qualification action in Dresden. And this is the last opportunity for athletes to earn a place in the semi-final stage of the men's 5,000 metre relay competition. And the man they came to support is in this race. Quarter-final four, the last quarter-final in the men's 5,000-metre relay competition at the Dresden 2024 World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. We have Bulgaria with Ivan Donchev, Maxim Maximov, Asen Gurov and Stefan Alexander Kumurjev. For Japan, it's Miyata Shogo, Yoshinaga Kazuki, Hayash Kose, Watanabe Keita. The Netherlands entering Friso Emmons, Itzak Delat, Kai Hausman, and Hugo Bosma. And for the United States of America, therefore, Andrew Ho, Daniel Yoon, Wesley Park, and Marcus Howard. And the Netherlands completing our Lineup of the top five in World Cup competition this season in this event. They are the uh, fifth best. 190 points coming into this weekend of competition to Belgium's 210, to Korea Republic's 280, to Canada's 304, to China's 330. But 
for the People's Republic of China. Elimination before the semi-final stage, allowing others to catch up or try to catch up. Quite a lot of the Bulgarians are real youngsters. It's a great opportunity for them as it is for all of the uh, young athletes here to make a bit of a name for themselves, uh, to get some experience. They're all 17 or 18, the Bulgarians. Ivan uh, Donchev and Stefan Alexander Komurjev are 18. They've already competed at the uh, Dresden World Cup before. Asen Gurov and uh, Maxim Maximov uh, likewise competed at Dresden last year. They're just a little less experienced than uh, the rest of the team, but not by much. Most of them train at the Ice Peak Club in Sofia, with the exception of Asen Gurov, who trains at Ice Start. It's a very fine city, Sofia. I've had the uh, pleasure of being able to visit it for a couple of sporting events uh, in uh, gymnastics, and it's a, a great city for dining, uh, a very social and vibrant city, some lovely green space as well, and you always have that rather stunning view of the mountains as well in the background when you're in Sofia. United States of America in second position. The Bulgarians racing with assertiveness at the start, doing what they can to be competitive with these other teams. How they handle the increase in pace when it comes will be interesting to see as we've now seen that from the USA and from the uh, Japanese team. Netherlands in third place. For Japan, it's Yoshinaga Kazuki at the moment. Change made to uh, Miata, who was in a bit of positional difficulty there. will enter its uh, next phase soon we'll see an increase in the pace come and uh, maybe a little stretching the Bulgarians are just starting to lag a little now USA Japan Netherlands in their own race uh, independently of Bulgaria but the uh, youngsters have done themselves credits at this World Cup competition so far reason to be optimistic about them what a great experience as well Netherlands now into the second place. Through Sir Emmons, the architect of that change. Change over to Bosma. And Japan will look to make their move. Will it come from Watanabe? Will it come from somebody else? It's not going to be Watanabe's move to make. Netherlands now out in front. Japan with the Yoshinaga Kazuki trailing in third with 10 laps to go. Top two advance to the semi-final automatically. Hausman at the front of the race. He hands over. The Dutch looking uh, quite in charge at the moment. All of it can change though with a transition from one racer to the next that isn't quite right. That's what makes relay so interesting. But this is 
looking more and more the Dutch in control. Oh, my goodness! Well, forget all of that. I mean, it's certainly going to be reviewed, but now things have changed. Just as I said, the Dutch were looking in control. Japan and the United States of America now first and second. Bulgarians well and truly lapped as we have a look at Hayashi Kose. And it's him that crosses the line to win it with the USA in second place. But all of that subject to review. And we'll look back at it now. Well, how things can change. There's no uh, suggestion of any third party involvement, is there? And there, in a nutshell, is why these relay races are so fascinating, because that was the Dutch in control, cruising through to the semi-finals, and they've disappeared out of the race. Japan and the USA joining the rest in the semi-final stage in Dresden. And that means that we've lost two of the top five from the World Cup standings in the 5,000 metres relay competition for men at this crucial World Cup competition in Dresden. All of that makes for a fascinating couple of days of finals action. I hope you'll be able to join us for all of the coverage. It's been a great pleasure having your company today. Thank you for watching the action at the Joy Next Arena in Dresden, and we'll see you for more short track speed skating and more World Cup competition as we hit the weekend. Finals to come tomorrow and Sunday. Until then, goodbye.